eat the skin off the KFC. I just love to have the skin. I'm the opposite. I peel the skins off and eat the meat Ooh. so you can have my skins. Oh my God, that's actually like a perfect combination. <laughs> I'm serious. Welcome back to the Just Trish Podcast. Today is without a doubt one of my most requested guests, someone I have loved for so long, fellow mukbang queen and the funniest person on the internet, Miss Chelsea Lee. Hey, honeys. Thank you for having me. I'm like stoked to be here and so excited to meet you. I am so excited to meet you. When I walked in and saw this bedazzled <laughs> KFC bucket... Oh my gosh, I'm obsessed. Well, this was fitting for us, I feel. We're, because I originally found you through mukbangs, and I guess that's not what you like started on, but I thought you were a mukbang person, that's it. Mm -mm. Yeah, you started on Vine, right? Started on Vine, doing just comedy and my trailer trash Tammy uh, character, and I started the mukbangs as a joke. Yeah, okay, that's what I was going (laughs) to ask you, because people wanted us to collab so many years ago, and I was just like... Um, you hit too close to home for me because I'm like, these, this is who I grew up with. And I was just yeah. like, mm, and I was trying to get up so far away from that thinking it was real. Like I thought you, you thought were, Tammy was real. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So, I gotcha. <laughs> okay. I so gotcha. tell me, so you were like, okay, so start off as all character, all shtick for the mukbangs. Yeah. So this God, my first mukbang was like eight years ago or so. Yeah. Kind of when they were first starting, people mm-hmm. weren't doing them. Mm-hmm. I mean, there was a few people on YouTube that were doing them. And they were getting millions and millions of views. And I thought it was insane. I was like, wait, so people are eating. Now it's so common. You don't think about it. But I thought people are eating on camera and people are watching it. I go, I couldn't. I was like, that is wild. Yeah. And so something I do as Tammy is I kind of, it's my way of kind of trolling. Like if there's a popular internet, you know, uh, fad going on, Tammy does it. And it's kind of my way of like her making fun of it type thing. Mm-hmm. She takes it serious. So I did a mukbang, only planning on doing one, <laughs> by the way. I was like, this is the only one I'm going to do. Did it in my car. Um, it was ridiculous. And people went nuts. Do you remember how many views your first one has? Not like a t- I think now it has like a million or something. But, but at the time, eight years ago, like a million was like a ton. Yeah. Yeah. And it wasn't. And and I had never planned on doing another one. And people were like, you got to do. M-. I mean, for weeks, just begging me and begging. I was like, gosh, OK, I'll do another one. And they I just haven't stopped since. So what was your what were you eating in the first one? Was it fast food? No, it was just leftovers from my fridge. Were you at your house eating? Yes. And okay. that, that was my way of making fun of it. I got leftovers from my fridge, <laughs> heated it up, went to my car in my driveway and did it and I was yelling at the neighbors there was nobody there you know but, um, oh so you were a full like, character oh full character that's so just funny. making fun of it and people just loved it I mean that was I remember it was so shocking and jarring because it was just like you saw everyone who did the mukbangs be so professional with it and it just seen you there and I was like mm-hmm. wow and I got I grew up with people like Tammy so I was just like Yep. <laughs> I yep. know this. And exactly. it was so real. And then for the people who like didn't grow up like in that area, I feel like people like thought, oh, this is so funny. This is like, yeah. there's people like that. <laughs> yeah. No, now I love it, dude. The mukbangs. Oh my gosh. They're so much fun. And people keep up with like the storyline, the stuff you talk about. I just, yeah, it's the, some of the easiest and it's easy. All you do is eat. Right. <laughs> well, you have to be in character. You have to yeah. make jokes and eat. I yeah. think that's hard. Yeah. That's, that's easy. I'm because really? I improv the whole thing. I just push my camera and just start just I don't even know what I'm gonna say, wow. what's gonna happen, nothing. That's the easy part. Wow, that's ta- that's talent. It's like here's how I explain it. When I do Tammy, it's almost like a switch in my head. And once I switch it on, it's autopilot. Wow. Where does it come from? Like, does it just something natural? Do you just know these people? Because I know you said monster Charlize Theron was like an inspo, which I totally can see. Yeah, so so Tammy's not really comes from one person you know I think she's a mix of like people just a lot of different people that I've seen or known growing up and then the movie monster with Charlie Theron if you go back and watch it her like you know her hair is all slick back and kind of her mannerisms you know and that's one of my favorite movies of all time that's wild that's your favorite I love that (laughs) dude I don't know it's just so good I was unsettled the whole time I'm a big crime true crime junkie okay they scare me those things scare me oh no the pipe thing was a lot for me I was just like I can't watch past this yeah um but no I kind of took 
the mannerisms from that and kind of mix it in with this. And and she was born, dude, and it just took off. That's wild. So what year? So you said eight years ago was your first mukbang. I started Vine 10 years ago. It'll be 10 years this year. Wow. Which is why, that is insane. Yeah, because I remember Vine like literally like it was yesterday. I know. It's crazy. Like when I think of TikTok, I think of like Vine and stuff like that. Like I was like, oh, it's very Vine. I thought I thought TikTok was Vine, but I guess it was Musical.ly or something yeah, before, which yeah. it wasn't. Um, no, I started 10 years ago. I quit my nine to five, five years ago. Wow. So I've been doing this full time. Touring, doing, you know, doing stand up now. It's just wild. How long have you been touring for? On and off straight for two years. Wow. That's, and your dates coming up are like crazy. Like they're just like back to back to back. You're close to here. You're like 20 minutes in Oxnard soon. Like, yeah, you should come to the show. I would love to. Okay. I don't know what to expect. I'm like, what is it? Cause like characters online, I've never, they've always, I've been like, what do they do? So I, I get that a lot. People are always like, what are you going to do? It's like, I, I literally just do stand up. So I have a whole set I've written and I, it, and it, it, the set is true to my life. Like real life stories from me, Chelsea. I just tell them as Tammy. Wow. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Is it like a, so stand up, but not like a one woman show where it's like a, a storyline? No, okay. no, it's not like a play, nothing or a sketch, uh, like a sketch show. Yeah. No, no, no. It is just straight stand up, stand up comedy. Stories about Chelsea as Tammy. Tammy's it, telling them. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Oh my God. That sounds so, how long is the show? Uh, I have two openers that are two of my best friends, Tina and Libby. And I think total it's like an hour and a half. Wow. Yeah. And you do the meet and greets and everything after? Oh, yeah. <gasps> Oh, that yeah. touring is literally the hardest thing in the whole world. Like, I don't know how you do it. Not Trip, that. Uh, girl. Okay. Oh, my. <laughs> and I don't think people realize that because I have a new respect for like musicians. Oh, my gosh. It's like I, you. it's weird because you love it so much because you get like the high of mm -hmm. the show and meeting people. But it's like hotel drive six hours. Hotel drive six hours. Oh hotel. And it's like every day it's like the the being on stage and the meeting people is what keeps you going, I feel like. It does. But then at the end, don't you feel a little drained? Uh-huh. Like, because you give so much. Like, I'm like, these people paid to meet me. I got to give everything. Yeah. And then you're just like, I'm so tired. Yeah, yeah. You can't talk sure. to anyone else around you. <laughs> for sure. And yeah. For sure. But at the same time, every time I get tired or stressed, I'm like, bro. Yeah. <laughs> I d dreamed about this. People dream about a job it's, like this. Yeah. You know, so I, I just, I don't complain, man. It's awesome. I think like our, cause we're, we're basically the same age. I feel like our like age group, like just, we had to hustle and like, not to say it's bad. I mean, I'm sure if there was influencing when we were 16, we probably would have been doing it, yeah. but, yeah. but we know the struggle, you know, and I feel like I'm the same way. I was just like, wow, this really is like the most dream job For ever. real, dude. Especially like the mukbang, the touring, all that stuff like that. Oh dude. Yeah. I, I think about that all the time. Yeah. Every time I have a little inkling of like, oh, I'm tired or I'm like, girl, you better snap yeah. out of it. People dream about mm. this. You better shut up. Okay. And I do. I shut myself up. I'm like, mm, mm That's so good, though. And it's good that you just, like, love it, too. Because you see so many influencers, like, complaining, which I get. It can be, like, tough. I get it when you're young. But, yeah. you know, it's still oh, no. a lot of work. Where was your 9 to 5 that you had? Oh, I've done, I've done everything. The last 9 to 5 I had, I was working at a place called Qualcomm in San Diego. Oh. And I was a, I was basically assisting engineers. I was like an assistant. So I would like, like test their microchips. It was like the, it sounds fancy. I promise you. It sounds very fancy. It was the easiest <laughs> job in the world. I would take a microchip, put it in a machine, push start, and then watch Netflix. Oh my gosh. What a dream job though. Yeah, it was great. <laughs> That's that was nice. that was the most adult job I've ever had. Yeah, because you worked at like Sonic and stuff. You said yeah, Sonic, Whole Foods, Wow, Victoria's Secret. You in that ran in that like bougie. I applied for Victoria's Secret so many times, never got hired. Really? Was it in San Diego? No, it was in Oklahoma City. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, and I hated it. That was the worst job I've ever had. Did you have to like fit people for their bras and stuff? I didn't have to do that, but I had to like they made me give. Uh, lotion hand massages to people. What? And I hated it, dude. We oh, had to wear a little earpiece. And then, and we were like waiting kind of like, not in the front of the store, but like mid store, pretending like we were like straightening stuff. And when someone would walk in, our manager, I'm not even kidding you, would be in the very back and they'd go, Chelsea, green sweater, go out, go. go. No. And I'd be like, oh. So I took mm. this bottle of, what was big back then? Heavenly. Oh, yeah. You remember that? Mm. Oh. Yes. Yeah, I love, I love, love spa. I love all those yes. Heavenly, the old school, yeah. We had to take Heavenly and we had to walk up and, and just basically add, and I would literally be like, would you like to try the, the lotion? I'll give you a hand massage. We had to say that. Oh, my God. And I would just pray that they would say <laughs> no. Just please. And most people did. And every once in a while, you'd get a sure. Oh, no. 
So I had to sit there and tell Just them like, about the lotion, massage. rub their hand. I, I, it was, I hated How it. How long were you going for, for the massage? Just a couple minutes. Just enough to tell them like about the you know, describe it just so dumb. Oh my God. To touch someone else's hands with like lotion is so, like the guys in the mall. It's just like, no, thank you. I do no. not want that. <laughs> no, I, that was the word. I hated oh, that. No. I would much rather work in the food industry than the retail industry. Retail is the worst. Cause they also make you be busy for no, I did like one job and they just make you fold, even stuff's folded, like inventory. Yeah. I feel, I feel for him, like retail people. Sure. For sure. Just also like not that exciting. And, no. Yeah. Now food industry, I'm like queen love- of that shit. Oh God. Really? I'm slinging on orders and taking I'm great at that tell me about it because my dream job when I was younger was to do fast food like I really did and I I swear I never got where did you go to college yeah okay so maybe that's why because I feel like I even out here I couldn't get a job like at all like period that's why I like stripped and stuff like that because I like applied but I couldn't anyways these are my dream jobs that's why I role play I love I love fast food I love fast food employees they're so nice they're always so happy let me hear about it did you get free food like how did it all work when you dress up as fast food employees it's my favorite thing you do by the way I love it I should have dressed up for you. I was like, because when I heard you work at Sonic, I was like, I just got a Sonic outfit. Oh, God. They have a peanut butter bacon shake right now. Did you try it? No. It's, I haven't either, but I saw Steph Pappas do it. And I was like, okay, we need to get it. I got to go try it. Yeah. That. Okay. Um, <laughs> Tell I me. worked at Sonic for eight years. I actually loved it at the time. I yeah. loved it. Um, I'm the, I was the car hop taking orders out. I would take the, I loved the switchboard. So when people rung in, the, the the switchboard inside would just buzz loud and you'd go answer it. And it was about, I mean, it was big, like, and it would have little just, they it's all electronic and computerized nowadays. Yeah. But back in the early 2000s, it was like, like manual. So we had little like color coded, you know, cheeseburger, number one, number, like all this stuff. And I was a pro, I would just, <laughs> And I got on my Instagram a few months ago and I was like, man, I go, I miss working at Sonic because I miss taking orders. I had so many Sonic managers reach out, go, come to our store. You can work for a day. I go, I'm, I will go work for it. I'll go, I'll go. <laughs> I'll go I'll, back to work. Get me on the payroll. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Weekends I can do. Get me on the payroll. I would literally do it. Oh my, did you, did you do it? Did you do it the day or anything? No, because we had a show in like South Carolina or something. Oh. And one of the managers, we tried to make it work, but with scheduling, but I'm going to. Oh, um, they should put you in a commercial. If you worked eight years, I mean, you're like legit, like you're real. Like, yeah. you know, that's amazing. Oh, I love, I loved working there. Oh um, the only God. thing that sucked is in the summertime when it's like a hundred and five degrees in, oh. in Oklahoma oh, yeah. having to take orders out that part I hated but I I loved working there did you roller skate out sometimes oh my god that's everything that's everything sometimes but here's the thing you got paid more if you roller skate no I, way I think it was like 60 cents more an hour <laughs> may, maybe even a dollar more an that's hour amazing but skating slowed me down Oh. And I couldn't take as many orders out to get as much tip. So I actually made less because of tips. They Oh, they tip at – I don't think I tipped at Sonic before. Oh, oh my God. Yes. Like cash or can you put it on the thing? Now you can put it on the card. I'm a big tipper at Sonic. No, I'm such a tipper and I didn't know you were supposed to, but that makes total sense. No one's ever rollbladed bladed out though here. A lot of people <laughs> don't know. You're, you're, yeah. Please t- tip your Sonic people. That yeah. makes so much sense. I'm mm-hmm. like feel so bad now because I go to Sonic all the time. Yeah. I'm going to go up right now and give them $100. Yeah. I feel yes. so bad. Because that is, that is so much work and it's like yeah. – especially when you have to like go out to the car hops and say, oh my God, that's, so you would make tips. What were you making in tips? I was making on a good, a good average day. I think 60 to 80 bucks was like good. Wow. If I came home with 80 bucks. That's, that is amazing. As a high school student, as a college, wow. I was like, yeah. Were you blonde and stuff back then? Oh yeah, I was cute. Girl. Oh okay, yeah, I could bet. I bet with your accent and your blonde hair, and just because you are like such a glam like girl, I feel like you look so cute. Like hi y'all. Yes, there's a there's a horrible side to fast food too. I've had burgers thrown at me. Oh my god, why? What? It was made wrong, so she threw it at me. Drink. That's wild that people do that. Drinks thrown at you. Just because um, why? They're wrong? They're like, oh, this is the wrong one. Just someone, I had a, I, I, I had a lady just, oh, people are horrible, man. We had like this big window um, on the inside, like, okay, so you would, it's hard to explain. You know, like a song, they're like real little inside. Yeah. And you usually have a big window if you drive by. Mm-hmm. Oh my God, we had this lady pull up to the window, take all her drinks, get out and throw them at the window. And we were just inside like. People are nuts. And this is before like TikTok and stuff. So you're not yeah. even, now that people mm-hmm. film everything when that happens. This is before everything. Oh, if you're, if, if they ask for no pickles or whatever, or, or they, sometimes people would literally not say that and then say they did. 
Does that oh, make sense? Right, right. They think they did or they they wanted to say it and didn't. Yeah. yeah that's the worst. If, I, if my order's wrong, I just keep it. I'm, I'm keeping it. It's Same. fine. <laughs> yeah. I'll eat never. it. Never. Same. Yeah. Go back again. Like, you know, can I actually get another thing? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. No, people, oh I've had a lot God. of food thrown at me. That is, wa- and what would you do? Just st- literally sit there in shock. Would you say anything back or would you just like, I'm going to let it go? I, I'm the type of person, I'm not like a, um, I, I when I'm in a situation like that, yeah. like I'm gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're psycho. Right. Bye. You're not gonna like go back and no. fight. No, I'm not. I, no, 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 no. Because uh, I'm large, and I I would probably do some damage if I really got to that point of like wanting to fight. No, so I'm like I need to I need to leave. Yeah. I'm linebacker large. You yeah, know no, what but I mean? you're really not. You're tall. You're <laughs> yes. very tall. Yeah. But the first thing I noticed, I was like, oh my gosh, no, you're actually like, I don't know. I think in, per- in your videos, you like come across some type of way or whatever like that. But in person, you're not. You're just very tall. Thank you. You really are. You're like a glamazon. Oh it's my- very like Anna Nicole vibes because she was so tall. She was yeah. like six foot and I she's know. like, and she's from that. Well, she's from Texas, but like Southern, you know. We're both Anna Nicole fans. Yeah. Anna Nicole, Marilyn, Obsessed. Dolly. Obsessed. Yeah. That's what I love about you. I love your Marilyn shoot when you did it on the beach. Oh. That was so pretty. Thank you. You. I didn't realize you did like you were such like a glamour girl. Like I I like to do it every once in a while. You look so good. I love Thank I love you. glam. I'm a different person when I have like hair and makeup. Yeah. But I don't wear makeup day to day. I'm I not like a, like this is like my glam. This is like my I dressed up right now. No, you look got yeah, my Kevin. Like this is dressing <laughs> this up. This is right? what I wear. I wear yeah. this on the daily. I love it. I think it's so good. But you you have like makeup on now, right? You have I your have, shadow. I have some, and, yeah, a little bit. But of eye yeah, no, your face and stuff. Your skin is so beautiful. Thank you. You do have. You're you're so are, sweet. I was looking. I'm like you look like a Barbie. Like it's oh so crazy. God. When I look at those glam photos, I was just like, oh. but I love glam. The glamour I, of it all. It's fun to do for me. Every few months, I'm like, let's do a fun mm. shoot. Let's do a fun hair and fun. Yeah. Yeah, just to like feel like a different person. Exactly, or exactly. And I also think because you have a character too, because it's like this is you, you're gorge, and then you have this character where you're Charlie Saron from Monster, which exactly, is like <laughs> exactly. And you know what's funny is the the Tammy character is very rough, raw, like you said, like no makeup, very like not what you would think is like pretty. Right. But oh. her confidence, she thinks every person on earth wants a piece of that and that's what's funny about her yeah but you know i bet guys like it are they into it like i'm sure there's because oh, yeah. i get it there is that appeal of just this like really confident like dominating woman and then everything you do with like your chest work for physical comedy as like no that's like hot there's so <laughs> yeah. many people including me i love putting stuff under my boobs i think it's like the talent of having just like large chest that hangs you extra know hands. Yeah. extra hands it's amazing and what you do with it is so good so i'm sure there are guys who genuinely are like if she, if Tammy had an OnlyFans, they would be like, "Oh, did you ever think about it?" Because you're very open with nudity and well, stuff. Well, I have an OF and I have <gasps> a Patreon, and and I do go nude on there, but I do it in a comedic way, if that makes sense. Like, what's that mean, like, comedic? Like, if I if I do post boobs, it's like in a it's like a funny picture of me, like of of a maybe a tit hanging off the side of like a car. So, like, it's not like I'm us- I'm not like trying to be like sexy. It's very funny. But that's probably really erotic because. A lot of people yeah <laughs> like in vlogs i'll just smash something with my tit or wow it's usually like funny it's not like in a sexual way but yeah. it, it pops off on there people love it on your only fans i mean yeah how long have you had it for i didn't know you had this i searched so much i was like does she have because i oh, thought you would have for yeah. sure oh man i well, couldn't find I, it <laughs> i do i do still have an, uh, an only fans but i moved to patreon because patreon was easier for me same content so you're doing an 18 plus patreon yes oh, i yeah. used to do that too that's so fun yeah why why patreon I think I could, OnlyFans things kept being taken down. Um, That's odd because OnlyFans, I feel like anything I, goes. I know, and I and I, it just was like things would get taken down. I couldn't contact any from OnlyFans. I just, I was like, man, I'm moving to Patreon. I kept it so people are still on OF, but and I do post the same stuff. But I'm Patreon's my main. What's your Patreon? Do you have like a Vienna URL or do you have like a link or? It's just, it's Chelsea Lynn. I think I'm unsearchable because they, they make 18 plus not searchable. Yeah, that's what happened with mine too. That's frustrating. It is. Yeah. But I keep the link in my Instagram bio. I do a, a TV show on there called Tammy, Tammy Bangs. Bangs. Is it on season three or season four now? Season three just wrapped. So you're going to um, do season, season four. Season four. <gasps> Next time we film in LA, you have to be on I episode. would love. I just recently found this too because I guess it was because it was behind Patreon. I haven't seen it. Yeah. And so when I went to go look, because now I'm on Patreon now too. And I'm like, I love Patreon. And like, it's so produced. Yeah. It's a, it's a professional 
produced TV show. Yeah. Um, and I, I can't put it on YouTube or anything because it does show nudity. Oh. It's a it's a comedy and it's basically funded by the subscribers of Patreon. Like they so they pay cool. for it. Everybody that works on 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 the show are paid. It's all my friends, my sisters, like about the whole group is on there. And it and it's we're on we're about to start season four and it's uh, where Trailer Trash Tammy runs a corn. I say corn. Now. TikTok safe. <laughs> you gotta say corn. I know. A corn empire. Ooh. Okay. Oh, wow. It's kind of like The Office, but corn. Ooh, uh, and it doesn't show actual corn. I love saying corn. I love it too. <laughs> Corn is great. It doesn't show actual corn, but there is nudity and it is, I mean, how has this not gotten picked up by HBO? It's, yeah. We're, we're going to try hard to pitch it this year, but if nothing happens from it, I'm fine. It's on Patreon. People love it. You just love doing it. I'm shocked it hasn't got picked up because that I is know. so like Reno Night. It's like very like office, like, you know, all that stuff together. Yes. Plus with like a little bit of new, like, yeah, Max or something would pick it up. Yeah. You would think. Yeah. Any of those. Oh my God. Are you, have you, so you, you haven't tried yet. You haven't tried to pitch it. We, not hard. We've right. had some meetings and stuff, but I have, we haven't like tried hard to pitch it. So that's a goal this year. Oh We're going to like, gosh. after tour and after I'm going on a, cr- I'm doing a cruise in March. Wait, my, what does that mean? My own cruise. What? I'm, how? With what? Are you in collaboration with like a line? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I know. That's, that's the most iconic thing. I think Suzanne Summers did a cruise, Backstreet Boys did a cruise, and now Trailer Trash trailer Tammy. Tammy. Yeah. <laughs> um, they approached me and I was like, what? I was like, this sounds great, but I don't know if I could, I mean, could I sell a cruise? Yeah, no pressure. And <laughs> it's a whole boat. The first week we released tickets, it we've sold ninety percent. So there are still some cabins left, but it's pretty much it's pretty much sold. We're gonna do um we're gonna do um stand up uh each night. I'm filming a special on the cruise. No my way. first special. Do you have it already sold or you're gonna you're gonna try and pitch it? Um I'm gonna try and pitch it. Oh my god. They I'd make rather, so much money, those people. Yeah. They get like seven million dollars for stand up specials. Oh, when it's like you're like yeah. When it's not on your first one, but when you've kind of been established and you get like later on down. This is your it. first. This is your first one. I'm shocked because like I've seen other like characters from like YouTube get Netflix specials. And I know. Like, okay. Well, that's amazing. Okay. Love that for the cruise. Um, so <gasps> where was I going? I was going somewhere with this. Hold on, I promise. So stand up every night, you're doing we're doing we're doing like bingo with Tammy, like stuff like oh that. God, you so know? you're like full time going to be in character. Full time. I, I'm doing some Chelsea stuff. We're filming a live podcast oh on the cruise, stuff like that. So when we're done with the cruise, I was going somewhere with that, but I forgot where I was. But that's in March. Like, do you know where you're going? How long? Bahamas. Three, oh, my God. Three I'm days. Leaving, leaving out of Florida? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Best cruise I've ever been on was to Bahamas. So really? good. Yeah. This is my first one. <gasps> And it's like yours. Like you get to perform. Wild. That was my dream to be like a cruise performer, like growing up, because they're so cool on You'd the cruises. Be so good. Oh, at I that. loved it. But they're like super talented. The cruise performers, yeah. like I could never, because they're like amazing. And I was like, I wish I could be that. Oh but no, dude. You'd be so good. The at fact that. that you're starring, this is like dream. Insane. But the fact that you sell out 90 there's no, I mean, that I just can't even fathom. I don't think any other influencer could sell out a cruise. Like I don't think anybody they, could. They um they said it sold it sold faster than like they were like naming off all these like like Bon Jovi. They're like you sold more in the first oh, week yeah. than Bon Jovi. I'm like, what? Because people would rather hang out with you and Tammy than <laughs> bon I had a couple I had a couple influencers reach out after my tickets went on sale and they're like, how's the how's the ticket sales going? I'm like, they're you know like it's 90 percent sold out and they're like we tried to do a cruise and we sold four tickets oh yeah that's most people that'd be me for sure anytime i've tried anything i'm like no i'm never doing live shows i sell like i sell 10 <laughs> tickets my live shows were for like 200 people and it'd be like 20 in the front so that's <laughs> remarkable to get people to buy and like go out for something is so hard yeah especially I'm, influencers i'm so excited wow. we're, we're gonna have a blast in march oh here's yes. yes here's where i was going with that sorry <laughs> so after the cruise in march i plan on taking some time off from tour to focus on pitching the show and stuff. Okay. So so you can actually have, so you're going to have like a break. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's yeah, going to be so to do it. good. Because when you're touring, it's hard to do anything else. Oh, yeah. It's like full. And now you're saying too, you're like out here in LA just promoting the tour. Mm-hmm. So it's like you're nonstop. Yeah. Which is like a lot. Yeah. And it's hard to like, once you have that momentum going, it's like hard to like stop it. But for a TV show, it'd be like so worth it. Because yes. TV now is just like not, Great. And I love TV. I'm such a fan of TV. And I'm just like, it's just like not good right yeah. now. You need something, especially like The Office or something like that. Yeah. What shows are you watching? Like what? what's that show with, uh, oh God, what's that hot guy? Pedro <laughs> Pascal. 
Oh, The Last of Us? I just watched that. Do you like it? I loved it. Yeah? Do you not like stuff like that? No, I'm more of like a white lotus girly. Like, okay, that's on my list. I watched it though. Like he loved Last of Us, and I watched it. It's it's it's. I don't know. I'm just not that person. But that guy's so hot. That's why I watched it. Pedro. Oh God. Really? I, no. I'm not a fan. I like the guy in the fourth episode who was also on White Lotus. He was also on the Chippendale show. His name's Murray Bartlett. Do you know him? I have to see if. See okay, his face. he won like an Emmy. He's like I think he was. Was he one of the gay couples on the season? Okay. Yeah, of, of Last of Us, and he's. I think he's hot. That's more my type but, okay but Pedro mm. I know I yeah, you know he's good looking I'm not like he's ugly but not my I, type yeah because yeah, I've been seeing all over Instagram like people freaking out over him and I thought he was cute yeah I was like oh he's cute let me give this a shot and I watched the show and I was like okay sometimes watching a show of someone will change yes. your perspective you're like oh okay he's kind of it's like Jacob Lordy when I watch Saltburn I was like I kind of get it now you yeah, know what I mean it makes exactly. sense I'm a Zac Efron girly at the moment I'm very into Zac Efron okay I think you love a strong jaw yeah <laughs> <laughs> Did you see him in Iron Claw? I'm like, no, no just I like, I don't usually like beefed guys, but he's, he's good. pretty hot. Yeah. Okay. When you see like a show or something like The Weeknd and The Idol, I'm like, I'm very, I get into the character. Okay. But I, uh, Pedro, I just, I know he's like the it boy, so I should yeah. get into it. But yeah. So that's your number one right now. Yeah. And I think he's funny. So yeah. But I don't watch a lot of like series like that. So to know what's out there, I'm a bit, like I said, I'm a big true crime. That's like all I watch. So do you watch like podcast documentaries, TV shows about it? Like, are you watching kids? candy like probably y'all love that probably well, all of that okay but more so probably documentaries and and 48 hours dateline <gasps> i can sit there for six hours straight oh and just and just get up to pee and just watch dateline don't you get scared aren't you like Ooh. no but i feel guilty for liking it well, everyone does i feel gu- i'm like when i'm like ooh, that was a good one i'm like oh god it's like real I- life yeah. Yes. Yes. So My biggest fear is becoming a true crime because I hate true crime so much. It just scares me. It's not that yeah. I hate it. I'm just like if I I'm such like a manifest or visualizer. So if I see stuff like that happening, I'm like it's gonna happen to me. Like I don't want to watch it, you know. Yes. And my biggest fear is that like something bad happens to me, and then I become the true crime that everyone talks about while they're you know doing their little mukbangs talking about true crime. <laughs> like who is it? Stephanie Sue. <laughs> she always mukbangs. Oh. She's like eating mac and cheese, and she's like, and then he murdered his wife. Yeah. I was like, hmm. no, that that makes honestly that yeah. makes sense. The whole like putting it out into the universe and it happening and sp- yeah though no, that makes sense yeah because like i i love like i don't love like but the sharon tate you know story like anything play, like playboy murders for instance yep. like i love those like the like watching it but then i like think about it and it make, makes it too yeah. real no and it's always sad like the dorothy stratton one and i because yeah. i watch but i'm like i try not to yeah no i i feel you on that but people but people love, it's, i think it's like the biggest genre in like documentary podcasts all of it i think so in terms of like the famous murders, that takes a backseat to like real, like the forty, the Dateline, the the small town, the stories you don't hear about. Yeah, I just started reading true crime books, like about like from the person's family or something. Family reporters, um, uh, yeah. Sometimes the family will it'll be like a the family will like write with a report like a reporter or a yeah so i just started reading that um and i, and I literally was like this has gone too far if i'm like mm. reading so it's just become an obsession you're like relaxing reading like true crime oh i was in just in the bahamas i knocked through two true crime books and on the beach <laughs> You're like on the beach relaxing. Like, and there's so much true crime in the Bahamas. Like the Natalie Holloway yep. one was down there. And it's just like, yep. to me, I don't know. I'm just, I'm such a scaredy cat, that stuff. Yeah. Do you, um do you follow like Gypsy Rose? Do you follow any of that? I followed her like case and stuff. Like lightly. I just watched the act. I'd never watched it before. Oh, the show. Yeah, that one's yeah, good. Yeah, I just yeah. watched the act. But I don't like follow her on, on Instagram or anything. <laughs> You're not like, yes, no, I'm no, rooting no. for you. Okay. No, I, yeah. I don't, I feel indifferent about that. It's like, whatever. I don't. Okay, so you're yeah. not rallying behind like everyone. Everyone's like so obsessed with her. She's like the it girl. I know, dude. Yeah. She's like wild. <laughs> it's crazy, like six million followers overnight. Insane. Yeah. So you don't like get behind these people. You're not like no. Okay. No, 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 no. no. Yeah. Not at all. Mm-mm. Okay, I didn't know. I mean, because you know, some of these people, like even like the Menendez brothers, could be argued. You know yeah. that they were like self defense. Like there are people you feel like maybe was justified. I don't know. Yeah, true. People get people get into it. I don't get into it that much. Yeah, you just casually. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a casual <laughs> true crime junk. Yes. I see it on TikTok because there's so many people that cover it on TikTok. So I see stories and I'm just like, yeah. oh, they just, it just makes me sad. It really makes me so sad. But no. I, I get why it's just curiosity. Yeah. And people want to know. Exactly. That's wild. I wouldn't think that about you because you're so like lighthearted. And I, I know. <laughs> meanwhile, you're just like, I watch true crime. Oh, yeah. Constantly. <laughs> That's yeah. so crazy. Yeah. And when did that start? I feel like always because you know what started it? Unsolved Mysteries. Oh, that scared the crap out of me. Oh, yeah. No. 
that intro song terrifying when i was a kid and i heard no when i heard that intro song as a kid i perked up mm. oh you were into it oh <laughs> i was like he's on oh that was my shit that one was really scary like america's most wanted was kind of more like okay look out for this person mm-hmm. but unsolved mysteries were like well unsolved so you're just like oh my god that person's still out there like where yep. are they gonna be and the guy's voice who hosted it oh i just oh scary. That, that's when it started for me honestly unsolved wow. mysteries in the 90s is it still around because didn't he come back it did on Netflix, but they've been really slow with putting out mm. uh, episodes. They okay. came out the season, and it's been a while, and they're really slow with it. Oh my! And they did the reenactments, and I think those are scary when they do the reenactments with it. I'm just like, woo! You know, was it uh, Matthew McConaughey who did like who was an actor no. for reenactments on Unsolved Mysteries? Just like once, or he was like a recurring character like once. Oh my god, I gotta see that. It's on. It's on YouTube or something. It's funny. What? Just see, it's like he's like in a driveway putting a bag into it. It's just wild oh, seeing that's him. That's so on, funny. Yeah, that's like his first job was acting. I think, that. I think so. I, I don't love know. that. I love like recreations. I would do something like that. That would be like yeah. But the unsolved mysteries was terrifying. Oh, I uh, yes. And oh it just God. happened to like regular people, like you said. You're from Oklahoma. I'm from Illinois, and there would just be so many like stories of just like a local news girl being stalked and then like killed. I just like it was terrifying it yeah like, wow, it could just happen to anyone yeah especially small towns like you know people get scared of like la and new york but i'm like i think it's the small towns the weirdos are at Dude, the small mm-hmm. towns people be murdering yeah oklahoma has some was true is in cold blood was that oklahoma the That's, capote one uh that sounds so familiar it was like in the 50s and it was a whole family be- it was like one of the first true crime books it was like i think um philip seymour hoffman played capote who wrote the book i don't know it was like this it was whole, set in oklahoma i want to say oklahoma? it's oklahoma <clears throat> okay I, well, I'm from Thackerville, Oklahoma, and so, something interesting. Very, very, very small town. I graduated with 12 people. There were no stoplights. Wow. Like, I'm talking very small town. We had um, one little convenience store called Shorty's. We had a gravel pile. And then now we have the world's largest casino, though, Windstar Casino. What? Windstar Casino. For for how many people in the town? They, well, people come from all over. It's like it's oh. like it's like an hour north of Dallas. So people come from all over oh. to it's wild. They started building it when I was in high school. So oh. it's the world's largest oh, casino. Wow. Now we have a Sonic. I mean it's wild. Oh, okay. So- I used to have to drive over the Texas border to work at Sonic in high school. Wow. Yes, that small. So now what is the population there? How did it like double, triple in no, size? No, it's still it's still, still pretty small. small. Yeah. People just come from outside to go to go there. Do you go back? I do every once in a while. Okay, so you yeah. have family back there. Yeah, still. yeah, yeah. Shout out Thackerville. Yes, Thackerville, Oklahoma. <laughs> but we have this little area because we're right on the Red River, like right in the, and that separates Oklahoma and Texas. Mm-hmm. Like the Red River was like two miles from my house, just oh my right God. there on the border. And we had this little area, I forgot what it was called now, um, where people would basically kill people from the big city, Oklahoma City or Dallas or right in between, and they would just go over the border and drop with dead bodies a lot there. And they would come up? And people have written books on that area. Oh. There, I believe there was either an Unsolved Mysteries or a Dateline on it. Um, we have a sca- it's we have a scandal about the sheriff and his son. Oh. There's been a documentary about that. What is the scandal? Uh, some girl, I don't know details about this. Some girl came up murdered and, and the sheriff's son, they're saying he did it. Or I don't, I don't oh. know details, but there was a documentary about that. So there's like, to be such a small town, yeah. there's a lot of stuff going on in Southern Oklahoma. That's wild. That's like dark. And I thought it was so interesting as a kid. They're like, oh yeah, there's dead bodies found all the time. And it's right across, yeah, right across the Red River. Um, How and- far from you? Like driving distance, like. 10, maybe 10, five, 10 minutes. Oh my God. Yeah. That's odd. And do you think it just goes like more unsolved or people just don't care because it's a small town so they just don't have like the police to do it or? I mean, could, could be. I, I, dude, I have no idea. Could be. Did you feel it when you were back there? Did you feel any of that darkness or you're just like. Well, there's a weird, um, there's, that's a weird area anyway. There's like an old, um, Native American, uh, burial Mm. ground there Mm -hmm. um and then there's a like a regular like a just regular one right beside it and we would go at night so dumb dude so dumb (laughs) conjuring the spirits (sighs) looking back i'm like why there's nothing else to do (laughs) yeah i get you we would go and just walk around these uh burial sites and and they were tombstones from like the 18 just those big old old and one time there was one 
leaning up against a tree. It had kind of come up, leaned up against a tree, and we walking around, we were leaving. And we heard that, we heard that thing plop. No one was near it. Oh my God. And were you scared or were you like, this is oh, cool, let's investigate? Now, now that, no, my, my ass <laughs> okay. was out of there. You're like, this is too real. <laughs> when it comes to, no, my, I was gone. Okay. Never ran faster You're in my <laughs> life. <laughs> That's good because I thought if you're like into true crime, you'd be like, let's go look. I, I enjoy paranormal stuff, watching paranormal stuff, but ooh, when it comes to like, fi- like being, it's very, I get really weird about it. What did you feel when that happened? Did you feel anything like cold or, you know, like any of those? No, no. just literal terror. Cause we turned around and there, were, I mean, we were, I mean, 20 feet from, and this was like a heavy, heavy stone. There's no way. Yeah. It, I mean, it was propped Not the wind. up. No, no, no. It had been propped up for a long time and it just, and we just ran. Yeah. I never messed with like the, we had, we had that too. I'm from like Pecatonica. So like ours were like Native American was like Winnebago, Illinois, Pecatonica, Illinois, Dakota, Illinois. So it was all like Native American stuff. And we had those same things, the graves and people would go and like mess around on there. And like our two, our kids, our kids in our school had like this huge like death rate. Like people were just like dying mysterious, like not mysteriously, but very like, you know, there would be like a heart problem for like a 15 year old. It's like weird stuff was happening. And I always thought there was like a little hauntedness to it. I was like, "Mm," because the same thing, it was the same vibe. And I was like, yeah, that kind of stuff I try not to mess with either. Yeah, totally could have been. Isn't it weird what like you'll do if you live in a small town, there's nothing to do. Like you'll just go to a graveyard, just hang out. Oh, yeah. That was the thing people did. (laughs) That's what I get. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Or just like we did it. They actually had cow tipping where we were from. I don't know if you had cows, but they actually did it. Did you ever tip a cow? No, never. I wasn't. I was like a good girl. I was like, didn't want to do like crazy things at night or anything. Did you? I tipped a cow once. (laughs) And that sounds so crazy to people who didn't grow up that way, you know? Looking back, it's so mean. Like I would never do it now. I mean, the cows, you know, they they would just be, if you don't know what it is, like if a cow, cow sleeps standing up. Yes. So. (laughs) So sad. So bad. (laughs) So you'd go when they're sleeping and just push them oh, yeah. so and they fall and people and loved up. it oh yeah it was like a night it was like a weekly thing let's go cow tipping yeah i know i was like and then i remember when tommy boy came out and people like didn't know what they're like that has to be a joke i'm like no that's like such a real thing nope and it's like so real i was like yeah it's a real thing we would um our nearest walmart was in gainesville texas and which was like a five ten minute drive and if we were bored guess where we were walmart <laughs> Wa- we- walking around Walking around the parking lot. I mean, yeah, you I just know. hang out at Walmart. That, 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 that is what we did, too. We just mm-hmm. had, like, well, our Walmart was, like, maybe, like, an hour we had to drive to. Oh, but, okay. but yeah, it was definitely, like, what else can you do? I don't know. That's why you had good imaginations. I feel like if you grew up in, like, those kind of areas, you had, like, a good imagination. Very true. Yeah. Very true. It's... I think that's a lot of where my uh, creativity comes mm-hmm. from sometimes. Because even back then, I was thinking, like, literally, I remember being in, like, 10th grade and being like, oh. I'm going to be an SNL one day. You know really? I, oh, yeah. Oh, that's what I wondered. Did you know? Did you always want to be famous or creative or? I always wanted to be a comedian. Wow. And I always wanted to be in like movies. And of course, back then, you you know, internet was never, internet. Oh, yeah. Com- that was never, you know, I didn't even think that was a possibility. Never thought about stand up ever. Wow. That was never on the radar. Wow. I wanted to be in a, a comedic actress. Um. But I never thought at the time, I'm like, oh, that doesn't happen to people like me. You know, mm-hmm. that's what you think. If yeah. you, you know, looking back now, I'm like, oh, you were so dumb to think that anybody can do anything, yeah. you know? Um, and then let's see here. We moved to San Diego um, 10, 11 years ago. And my husband got a job in San Diego. We were living in Dallas. And I was pissed that he got a job in San Diego. I'm like, we're not moving. What are you doing getting a job in San Diego? Oh, you didn't want to come to California? No, because I didn't want to leave my sisters. My sisters had just had a babe. Like, I was like, what are we doing? So long story short, he was like, um, he goes, let's just do it temporary. He goes, you can, you'll be close to LA. Maybe you can like go after your dreams now. And and that's kind of when I started like Vine and stuff. And and it popped off. and. Yeah, I did. So you weren't doing, was social media, because you said 11 years ago, so was social media around when you were in Dallas? It was, but people, it wasn't like it is now. You know how yeah. like there's so many people creating content and stuff? It was different back then. Like there was a few big YouTubers, but nothing, the fact that I could make a career out of it and do comedy out of it was never even a 
thought, you know? Wow. So I, w- I just started for fun. Okay, so you're in San Diego, and then how do you even figure out Vine? Like, I wasn't even on Vine, and I was on YouTube. I'm like, what's, how did you figure that out? Dude, I was just messing around. I was messing around. I had I had a Reba t-shirt, you know. Love everyone it. needs one. <laughs> and do you remember that show, American Pickers? No. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> All right. Okay, tell me. <laughs> it was these two guys, and they would go around, and literally, it was a reality show of them. They would go around and drive around in a van and go to people's houses that look junky, and they would see if they had, like, any antiques in, in the yard. Oh, okay. Any antique cars, any antique. They would go pick for, you know, and then bring the stuff back to their shop. It was huge. Oh, I didn't know. And Why one guy was tall, thin, and handsome, and the other guy was, like, short, fat, and, like, not. Right. Although he was. He looked great to me, but, <laughs> right. you know, he, you know <laughs> yeah, yeah. everybody liked the other one. Uh-huh. <laughs> and so I did a I, – my first, like, Tammy Vine was – we were driving through town and we were passing this trailer house. And I go, stop, let me do this video. I have my Reba shirt and I go, let me do this video in front of this house. It wasn't even my trailer. Got out, got in front of it <laughs> in their front yard. <laughs> and I said, um, I said something like, uh, the American Pickers guys are going to come look at some shit I got at back. After that, me and the fat one are probably going to fuck. <laughs> and people... <laughs> And I was just being dumb, you know? I had like three followers. Oh, my gosh. I was just being stupid. I thought it was funny. And it just like took off. Were you like in character kind of? Or you were just wearing a Reba shirt because you I was wearing a Reba shirt. I kind of did a character. I took my hair and I just, you know, pushed it back. And I kind of was doing the the, uh, Charlie Theron, the kind of mannerisms. Okay. But if you go watch my early, early stuff, the character is very different. She's like, I've perfected it over the years. Right. Like the, vo- the voice was way deeper back then. I've calmed down on that. Right. So, but yeah, I kind of, that was the first time and I, wow. and it just took off, dude. And people probably just thought you were just this real uh, person that this is your trailer. People still think Tammy is real. I, yeah. My sister runs my merch booth and she, we had a show in um, Wisconsin and she said, so I have Tammy merch and Chelsea merch, mm-hmm. headshots and t-shirts and stuff. And she said that a lady, she's like, you're never going to guess what happened before the show. A lady came up to get some t-shirts and she goes, who's Chelsea? No way. And Beth goes, uh, that's who you're here to see. And she goes, no, we're here to see Tammy. And Beth goes, she didn't know. Uh, oh no. And it makes, it honestly makes me happy right. that the character is so believable, you know? Yeah. But I try to be open with, you know, that it is a character, you yeah. know? But a lot of people don't, don't know. know. Did you ever try to hide it at the beginning? Or were no. you always, you were always open? I was always very open. And, um. and I had people tell me to try to hide it. Right. And I just didn't feel comfortable. I was like, I, I don't want to... I want to do other stuff. I don't want to be just, you know, uh, like Larry the Cable Guy. Yeah. He, that's a character. And a lot of people don't know that. And he's very like, he's, he's talked about it. He does interviews as him, as himself. Mm -hmm. But I didn't know till like five years ago that that was a character. Yeah. I guess I just thought it would be like an exaggeration of him or something like that. Like, so he has to be, he's never out of character. Not when he's working, not when he, oh. he's done very few interviews as himself. That's what I wondered. So when he does interviews, he's Larry, he's Larry the KY. I think if he's like promoting something or a movie or something, yeah, he does Larry the KY. And then you feel like you always have to be somewhat in character, yeah. right? Because people expect that. Like this right. is your, this is your accent. Yeah. No, okay. I'm very. You're not it, like a little bit Tammy right now. You're like, this is no, fully this, me. <laughs> this is me. And sometimes okay. people, if I do a a, a pod, sometimes people will be like, well, are you going to come as Tammy or Chelsea? I'm like, I can do whatever you want. How do I love doing stuff as Tammy. If you want me to be Tammy, she'll come on. Really? You've done interviews as Tammy? Oh, yeah. Wait, oh, I don't yeah. know if I've seen because I watched a lot of your interviews, and I was like, I don't think I've seen the Tammy one. I, I've done some... Most podcasts I'll do as Chelsea, though. Yeah. But I'll, I'll do some Tammy stuff. Tammy would intimidate me. Characters intimidate me, because I'm not an improv person, so anytime like a character, we had Terry Joe on, it's just like so intimidating, and I just laugh, and I'm just like not a good improviser, yeah. but I, I would get in, I would definitely get intimidated by a character, for oh, sure. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Trish and Tammy. If it's scripted, if it's like Tammy Bangs, okay, I'll do it. And okay, I, yeah, yeah. And I love the nudity of it all. I've always said this, because like White Lotus has a bunch of nudity. I'm like, God, I wish there was someone that like looked like me that was just nude. Like, I want to be nude in a movie like mm-hmm. that's my goal but I'm like no one's gonna put me naked in a movie but I just like love the idea of it so the fact that you're like naked on this I think that's like so cool thank you because it is it's just like I love I love being naked I love my body and I'm yeah. like god it's crazy they wouldn't put me naked in like a movie or a tv show it's, you know that what I mean? is insane but I'll do it for Tammy Bangs. yeah <laughs> 
Yes. <laughs> I just think that's so cool that you're doing that. And I think that, again, I just, not to go back to it, but I feel like it's like such needed on TV. Yeah. It's just, no, you know. No, I, I agree. Thank you. That's yeah. very, very sweet of you. Um, Tammy and Trish, Tammy and Trish's tits, we got to make it happen. I'm ready. I'm ready for it. <laughs> trailer Trash Trish. Well, the thing is, is when I was younger, people always called me, they always called me Trailer Trish, like Trailer Trash, yeah. Trailer Trish. So it was always like a trigger. So when you came around oh. originally, and people were like, you have to do this with Tammy. And I just thought you were real. You were like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I was just like, no, I'm not that. And then yeah. once I realized the character of it all, I was just like, oh, I kind of like live. And then when I found like you as like on your podcast, because I first saw you, I think it was like Dumb Blonde years ago. Yeah. And I was just like, oh, I'm like, this is like a, this is a totally different person. This is a character. It makes yeah. sense now. Yeah. And then I was like, okay. And then you collabed with so many celebrities. We were talking about Pedro Pascal. Have you ever collabed with him? No, I would die. Would you do it as Tammy? I will do anything he wanted. <laughs> Could you imagine Tammy interviewing? Oh my <laughs> gosh. My I'm gonna start a um a little I've got a lot going on, but I have this idea to start a a, a Tammy podcast where she interviews comedians and celebrities because I think it would be hilarious. Oh so he's I'm manifesting it. Oh, he would do it because he seems silly. Like he seems like he does silly things like SNL and stuff like that. Right. Oh right. Oh my god, that'd be what because you're so good. Like I think I saw you with was it with Nona Judd? You did an interview. Yeah. Oh, Luke Bryan, of course. Yes. That was – okay, wait, I need to know about this because Luke Bryan is, like, arguably, like, one of, like, the biggest stars in the world. Like, how did that happen? So I uh, – his wife was following me. This was three years ago, maybe. His wife was following me, and she sent me a, a DM on Instagram, and she was like, hey, can me and Luke FaceTime you? We have this idea <sighs> for a prank. Oh my God, I would die. At first, I'm like, huh? <laughs> and because they like apparently do like family pranks all the time. It's they're very big on that, which I didn't know. It was like a part of a days of pranks, prank they, or something. They do they do pranks throughout the year and the stockpile them, and then the month of December they release one every day. That's so wild. So, so random. <laughs> I know. So they Facetime me. There's like you know Luke Bryan. I'm like, hey, you know. <sighs> And they just, they were like, we have this idea that you play like a crazy fan who's out trying to get in the gate and like security is trying to keep you back. And somehow you break in and tackle Luke and because his mom's like very protective and very like, so she was going to be there like with him as I tackle him. Oh no. <laughs> and they were having this charity event and they that they invited me to and they go, it's perfect. Like we'll all be there. Like we got to knock oh, this God. out. And I go, this is hilarious. I can do it. We get there and his mom, I can't remember if I, I didn't meet her before. No, no, no. His mom was very like rugged, an old rugged lady. Okay. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Like kind of intimate. Was she intimidating? Sh- very. Okay. And he, wow. And he goes, okay, so we told mom that there's a crazy lady threatening to kill Caroline outside. And I go, Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh my God, so intense. Hold on. She's got a shotgun. Ready. I go, is she packing? <laughs> Triple check. Yeah, that's what's scary about I, those. I, I didn't know it was going to be this intense, you know? <laughs> And he goes, she's fine. She, it's, we, you know, we just wanted to amp up the, you know, I was like, oh my gosh. So we had the shot and they were talking, and I just, you see the video, it's all over. It's yeah. Crazy. And I tackle him and she, you see a shot of her. She's smoking a cigarette. She, before she, as I'm tackling him, she takes her cigarette out, throws it. And then starts trying to get me on. It was wild. Oh my God. And I actually felt really bad right after. You did? I, yes. What'd you feel? Or you're like. Like, is- like I was going to give her a heart attack. I wondered that too with like an older parent. Like you're like, oh no, it's going to be. And I felt really guilty and, and horrible. And it, and it took her about an hour to calm down and actually talk to me because she was mad at me. Even yeah. though she knew like it was a prank, she was oh, still, yeah. she still looked at me as if I was a threat and yeah. I, I felt really bad. But after about an hour, we were best friends. Okay. So everything was good. I would be pissed. Like if someone said, I hate pranks on me and it's like Moses set me up like that, I would still be pissed. I'd be like, what the hell? Yeah. Like, she was mad for a while. Oh man. But it was fun. I get yeah. to do, I get to do fun stuff like that. I'm like, this is wild. I mean, to get to tackle Luke Bryan, it's kind of like everything. It was great. <laughs> and he was like, did he? He like kind of stood. He like kind of stood it a little bit. Like you didn't like pile him down or anything. Yeah. No. It was. Yeah. It was. It was so much fun. Oh my god. No. The celebrity stuff you do because I'm so obsessed with celebrity world and I'm just like never been connected to celebrities like that. I'm like it's really impressive. Is there ever a celebrity like I saw the one on Jed one? Is there ever one that like doesn't get it? You don't have to say the names. Are yeah. they just like mm, this is I'm weird? Trying to think. <laughs> I know they've um, always loved it. I, no. Everyone's wow. been. I will say this. I've never reached out to a celebrity. I've never DM'd a celebrity to collab. I've never, 
I've never, they've always come to me. And and that's not a brag. That's That's a a flex. That's That's a flex. (laughs) I've reached out thousands of times to everybody. Yes. I never stop. Because I just assume people don't know who I am. Why why would I assume they want to do a video? You know what I mean? So it's them coming to me and I'm always like, really? Like, that's amazing. Okay. So they, they come, they go in knowing who I am and knowing. Yeah. So you feel more confident. You're like, okay. I'm like, yeah, let's do whatever you want to do. Let's mess around. Yeah. Who is the most like starstruck that you were probably winona that was wild how did that happen so they reached out to you too her team so she's been she's been following me on instagram for years and every once in a while she'll reply to a story and i just die every time oh yeah she's up there with like dolly they're all in that same category oh god and i know someone that works with her family Okay. So, and I've never like asked for tickets or asked to meet someone. I'm very like, you know, I don't want to bother people Mm -hmm. type of thing. And she had a show in Knoxville that was the closest to Nashville. I live in Nashville now. And I I went to go buy tickets and it was sold out. And I was like, oh gosh, like I was so bummed. And I go, I'm going to text our our friend and see if they can just get me some comp tickets. Mm -hmm. I don't have to, you know, I don't, you know, have to meet whatever. Yeah. And he was like, I texted him. He goes, absolutely. Um, here's uh, her assistant's email. Just shoot her an email. She knows you're going to be, you know, reaching out. And I was like, okay. And she was like, oh, honey, so we got you tickets. And Winona wants to make a TikTok. And oh and I'm literally like, oh, my God. <gasps> oh, my God. Were you nervous? Do you get nervous? Yes. You do? Okay. I, get, I, I got nervous coming here to me. Really? Yes. Wait, really? That's so interesting. But then once you're there, you're just yeah. like, okay, you're fine. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I get the same way. I get very mm-hmm. nervous. Yeah. For me, it's an excited nervous, I think. Yeah. But I do get nervous. I was like, oh, my God, I'm meeting Trish. Oh. You know, I got it. I was like, oh. <laughs> I mean, Winona Judd. <laughs> yeah. And then, yeah. It's like, that's like amazing. But I, I walked in and she was so tiny and just the big red hair. And I was so starstruck that I was, my words weren't coming out. <sighs> and I've never done that. Yeah. Even if I'm nervous, I still keep it cool. Yeah. And, you know, Pull but I was like talking to her and I was fum. I was literally like, but I was horrible. <sighs> but she could not have been nicer mm. and down for whatever video I wanted to do. And, and, Oh gosh, Winona Judd. Ashley Judd was there. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. You got to meet her too? I did. Yes. She said hi. I didn't want to bother her. Yeah. She said hi. I was like, <gasps> oh my God. Oh, that would be crazy. Especially when it's like their show, you know, it's like their thing and you're like there as like the guest. You're like, oh my God, this feels so surreal. Especially yeah. coming from Oklahoma and stuff. Like you said, it doesn't it doesn't happen to people from small towns, is what they're told, you know. Right, right, yeah. right. And oh, I think about it all the time. Like, I can't believe I get to do any of this. I mean, that's that's wild. That's huge. I, I don't think I would be able to speak either. With and her. I'm going to drop a flex right now on let's you. Hear. I love, there's been so many flexes. I'm so like, wow. Okay, let's hear another one. I love it. I've got one on his phone number. No. What? We're friends now. Oh, was she like, here, take my number? She, it's funny because I didn't know we had a mutual friend. It's so weird. I didn't know we had a mutual friend. And the next day, I get a, I get a, a text from my friend going, hey, why want your phone number? No. And I go, didn't know you knew Winona Judd. <laughs> You're like, who are you? <laughs> and then I get a group text of him, Winona, and me. And he goes, hey, why? Here's Chelsea's number, blah, blah, blah. She's like, okay, thank you. And I'm just like, oh, what? She wanted my, just wild. Have you texted her? No. No, you haven't used it. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I would feel, no, no, no. I would feel so, I will when the, you know. When it's, you know. The podcast comes around or something. Yeah. And would you text her directly? I always feel like when I have anybody's phone number, I'm like, I don't want to text them directly. I'm like, should I be talking? Even Tana, I'm like, should I talk to your assistant? Like, yeah, I just feel I, that's weird, how you know? I feel. That's yeah. how I feel, too. Yeah. But, I mean, if you have the number and they wanted your number, I guess you wait for her to text you, maybe. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. That's that's a flag. Because she was like, oh, well, we always have big family uh, dinner, like, I think, with, like, her whole team and stuff. We always have cookouts. You'll have to come over. I go, honeys, let me know. Oh my, would you go? Yes. I'd be so nervous. I don't know if I could go. I'd get too nervous. I'm like, I don't know if I should go. I feel like when I meet people the first time I'm nervous, but after that, I'm... You could just hang out. Yeah. What is your sign? Do you know? Leo. Are you into- oh, interesting. Are you August? Is that yes. your birthday? Okay. August interesting. 9th. I don't know. Like two- oh, interesting. What does that mean? Well, because my mom is I don't know Leo. nothing. I don't know too much, okay. but my mom is very like... it's. Well, you guys are the similar because you like true crime. So maybe you're okay. like my mom vibes. You know what I mean? But um, I don't know much about Leos. All I know is they're just kind of more like... They're more like 
tame, calm, like, like you know, like, okay. that's what I've heard. I don't know. Okay. But interesting. I mean, but you're, you're probably like that in your real life. Like, you're totally, do you think you're totally different than, like, Tammy? Oh, that's a good question. Yes and no. Okay. I feel like she, she's more abrasive mm-hmm. and I'm nicer. You know, I'm nice where she's, you know, she doesn't, I, th- I don't think she tries to be mean, but her just abrasiveness comes off as mean. Yeah. But I mean, sometimes I'll say something or do something and my husband's like, okay, Tammy. Oh, really? It comes yeah. out. The crossing. You're like, wait, who am I? It comes out. <laughs> sometimes the voice will come out. Sometimes the, yeah. So she's in there a little bit. Okay. We're very different, but I mean she's in there it's hard to like suppress it i mean it's like character it's almost like method acting yeah you're just like you become that person yep exactly Exactly. but are you like when you're home with your husband are you just would you say you're more reserved are you more just like yeah i'm a very i'm an extreme extrovert but like when i'm home i i like to just stay home by myself Mm -hmm. um i'm not like a party i don't want to go out and do and he's the oh he's the he makes me seem like the shy one in the relationship. Really? Oh, so he's like going out and stuff like that. He's just, wow. he'll make friends with anyone. Oh. He'll, he wants to always, dude, he came home one day and he was like, uh, he goes, oh, I'm going uh, fishing with John tomorrow. And I was like, who's John? <laughs> Oh, I bought a carburetor from him on Craigslist. <laughs> oh my God. I'm like, what? Oh, that, that would be wild. Yeah. Um, one just time. friends he, with everyone. Oh. <laughs> One time he was on a flight and he goes, hey, uh, I'm investing $10,000 into this company. Um, I met this guy. We sat beside each other on the flight. So I'm, a, and I'm just like, what? Are, oh, my. He's that type of person. That's amazing, though. That is. I admire people like that for sure. He's the type of person. If he if he sits down next to you on a flight, he's going to talk to you the entire time. Oh, my God. Where me, I'm like, hello. And then that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, he makes me seem very shy and I'm not, but he's just so, yeah. Because so. in videos, he comes across more, more reserved. He's very different in videos. It, why? I wonder why. And that's just kind of the, the character I made for him because Tammy is such a loud, explosive character that it's too much if there's two of those. Right. So he, when he plays Daryl, he's very, he's, yeah, very calm, submissive. He's the submissive one in the relationship uh-huh. between them. Right. He really is, is acting. Wow. So wait, his name's not actually Daryl? No, it's Greg. I thought I was going to say Daryl. I'm like, let me not, just in case that's not his name. Okay. His name wow. is Greg. Oh, okay. Wow. And it's funny because one time we went to a, a sandwich shop and we ordered and they were just calling out your name and we had just ordered and sat down and they go, Daryl. And he gets up and I go, what are you doing? He goes, our food's right. I go, your name's Greg. He's like, oh, oh my. my. He's becoming part of this world too. The Tammy and <laughs> Daryl world. <laughs> I know. So. Oh, no. Yeah. yeah. So he's he's fine. He's been fine being on camera. Like he's not. Oh, he, he's, he loves it. Oh, he really? loves it. He, okay. He loves coming to the shows and like meeting. He'll go out in the lobby before oh. and just say hi to everybody. Wow. And people love to see him and. And he thinks it's so cool. He loves it. That's amazing. Now, when I first started doing it, he didn't understand it because he still does not like he's not on the Internet or doesn't get social media. No, he he doesn't get it. Um, He just got an Instagram and he like is not on it. He's not that type of guy. Um, So when I first started doing the videos, he really didn't understand what I was doing. And the I'd, character? The character, the post, anything. Right. I'd be, I'd be like, can you film this? And he was like, what do you, he just didn't understand. <laughs> but he was supportive. Yes. Yeah. And when it took off, like now he is like, he loves it oh, so much. He gets it. Now he's like number one fan. Oh, biggest supporter. Mm. I'm not even kidding you. We, when I quit my job, this is so cheesy, but it's true. When I quit my job, we had just bought our first house in San Diego. Our rent ratio to mortgage ratio had like tripled, you know? Oh my God. And I was working and we had never discussed me quitting or nothing. And I was on my way to work one day and it's just a light bulb went off and I go, I'm putting in my two weeks. I'm going to do this full time. We had not discussed it or anything. And I went to work, put in my two weeks and I called him and I was like, I was kind of nervous. I was like, Oh God. I called him and I was like, uh, I put in my two weeks today thinking that he was going to be like, we just bought a house, like that month, yeah. that month. Oh my gosh. We just bought a house. Go get your job back. First thing he says was, this is wonderful news. Now you can do this full time. Oh my gosh. Wow. And I was like, are you sure? 
Oh my like, god! You know, and and that's when it really, you know, when I was able to put everything into comedy and stuff is when it really took off. That is definitely like I feel like everyone's like biggest inspiring story to put that two weeks in and be like I have faith in myself, mm-hmm. and then to have your partner have faith in you because yeah. so many people win it, especially when it comes to money and yeah. stuff. It's oh, crazy. And, and the funny thing is, I wasn't making any money at the time. On oh it, my on. gosh, nothing. Maybe a few hundred dollars a month on YouTube and stuff, but not. Oh, wow. I wasn't touring i wasn't doing merch i wasn't making money on social media i wasn't making any money oh my god that was God. The, that was the thing that's why i thought he was going to be like what are you doing oh, and he wow. goes he goes this is wonderful now you can do this full time and oh. and yeah wow. so what did that look like when after your two weeks what did what did you start doing full time like videos, videos, content. And it actually really took off. I started doing merch after that. So I was able to, and I literally, when I had that job, I was bringing home $2,000 a month, Hmm. $2,200 a month after taxes. And that was the most I had ever made at a job. And I told myself, I go, if I can just make $2,200 a month, I don't need anything else. That is it. Yeah. And within, I think within six months, I was making that and more. Wow. And it was just, I've been, just been In riding the way. Do, yeah. And, and that was five years ago, you said. That's so, it's not that long. I feel like no. you've been on for so long. Like, I feel like I've seen you for so long. That's yeah. crazy, five years. Yeah. And so you're posting every day on YouTube. Where is the where is your income coming from? Mostly YouTube? Touring. I don't make crap on... on. Wow. Yeah, YouTube. Well, now it's gone. Sometimes it was high and now it's yeah. like, yeah, it's nothing. I don't make enough on YouTube, TikTok. I don't make enough to even pay my bills if that was, if that was yeah. needed. Yeah, no, same. Um, yeah. I make my money touring and Patreon. Wow, that's yeah, amazing. Patreon, yeah. Patreon is really where it's at. That's number two. We couldn't get sponsors. I never get sponsored. Me neither. And so I was like, yeah, it's so weird. Mm-hmm. And then you see other people and you're just like, how did, anyways, that's yeah, a whole other thing. I know. I'm like, how do we not get sponsored? I know. But thank God for Patreon because we just started it like a few months ago too. And it really is amazing. And the support that they want to support you, you're providing like quality content yes. for them. I think that's like so, it's so, so cool. I love, it truly is the support from the subscribe. It's so, it's sweet mm-hmm. that, thank y'all for being on there. And it's, I mean- yeah, we're popping off the content on Patreon. It's ama- It's basically like, you know, getting, like, we pay $60 a month to Hulu. You know what I mean? Netflix is right. now $17. Right. So you're getting, it's basically it's basically like that. It's like ahead of its time, like this app, and you're getting this, like, fully produced show from you plus other stuff. Right. I think it's amazing. Yeah, you were, I, your Patreon and Bunnies, too. I was like, wow, this is like, I'm going to start doing this stuff, her, you know? Her Patreon's popping off. 70,000 people she yeah. has on there. I was like, it's amazing. And Drew Monson, I follow his Patreon. And so mm-hmm. I was like, oh, let's start doing that. And so it really is. I had it years ago, and it, like, saved me. Because there was one time when the adpocalypse happened. Were you on YouTube when the PewDiePie scandal happened? No. It was like 2017 and like he had someone like holding up a sign. I don't know. It was like weird. It was something – I want to say it was something like Nazi related or something. Okay. And then anyways, all the advertisers pulled out like Pepsi, Coke, like everyone. So I was making like literally $0 on YouTube when I was making like 150000 Oh my god! Yeah. Gosh. So I was – and I was so over my head. I was spending money, all this stuff like that. And so then I went to Patreon and I was like, oh, it, did, yeah. it helped so much. And again, yeah, back on it because people like love to support on that platform. Exactly. I go support everyone on there. I'm always like, yeah, more me Patreon. Too. It's I'm so a, cool. Yeah, me too. Bob the Drag Queen does his show on there. Like I just think it's so cool and it's like – and it's safe from trolls, you know. I feel like they can comment and be – that's safe. your diehards. Mm-hmm. That's your people. Yeah, that's your people. Yeah. So how long have you been doing Patreon then? Mm, about a year. Oh. Yep. About mm. a year. So Tammy Bangs, you did three seasons in. So it was on OF. I see. And then I took everything off OF, put it on Patreon and all the all the backlogs of, wow. of Tammy Bangs. Yeah. And are you doing this all yourself or do you have help? Oh, I do everything myself. Right? I, where was I? Somewhere yesterday and someone was like, oh, yeah. they said something about my team. And I go, brother, uh, <laughs> there ain't no team. That's what's wild to me. Because like even today you came by yourself and I'm like, I just always see, like, I feel like you're surrounded by people all the time. So you're just no, doing my, this yourself. I record everything on my phone, everything, all my content on my phone. Oh my gosh. I ed- edit everything myself. I post everything myself. If you get a comment back from me, it's me. Um, on Instagram and TikTok too? Everything. Wow. Everything. Wow. My sister, I have two sisters that work for me though. One of them is my oh, tour manager. So she cool. does the merch and she helps with the podcast. And the other one's on the podcast too and she runs the podcast social media. Wow. But other than that, it's it's just me. It's like a family. And I love that it's a family. Like when you can like, employ your family to like, because those are the people you trust. Me too. My yeah. mom and sister send out my Patreon headshots. We send them through the yeah. mail. They're like stamping them. They're putting stuff on. It's like, yeah. it's, it's like the people you trust. And it's mm-hmm. also nice to just have it in the family. Exactly. Exactly. And to have that is so cool to like work on the podcast together mm-hmm. and and we're all we're all super close anyway. Yeah, so, so it makes wh- sense. Yeah, whenever I was able to like f- f- you know f- financially like 
hire them. Like yeah. they were the first. I'm like, you don't want to quit your job? Wow. You know, that's like, like the dream too yeah. for everyone. And does your husband? Does he work with you too? He uh, he's a failure analysis engineer. Oh, so he has a like a full time job. He just quit. I just made him quit. Oh, that's <laughs> and, amazing. And he did not want to quit. Really? But his job is super stressful. Mm. Very stressful. Mm-hmm. And. I, I mean, for the past year, I've been like, you, you're going to have a heart attack at 40 if oh. you don't quit this job. But he's a very like has to work type of guy. Mm-hmm. He was like, what am I going to do with no job? I was like, you know what? Like he's really into cars and racing and fishing. I go, dude, do that for a while. Right. Take your mind off working. You can start a fishing vlog. Dudes love that stuff. Oh you know, right? yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. You can do that, whatever. We t- we've talked about uh, mm-hmm. um, opening a business down the line. I go, you'll have you'll have work, work to do. Yeah. So I literally forced him to quit his job. Oh my, how's he liking it? He, I was talking to him. He's been, I think he quit four months ago. And a couple weeks ago, I asked him, I was like, how you yeah. feeling? He goes, it's just weird. He goes, I still feel like I need to be somewhere and oh. I need to do something. You know, he goes, it's very weird. Yeah, that transition like mm-hmm. out of it. Well, that's good though. I Like you said, for his overall health, I feel. Exactly. Just, if it's a stressful job. And exactly. He's able to. I know it's the best. I mean, we work together now full time and it's just like nice because it's just like you can have our own schedule and make our own thing. Yes. And you've done the work. You put in the work of all that stuff. You guys have both hustled enough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, exactly. and you're still going, which I feel too is just like having that support too. You know, he's in your videos. He's coming to your shows. I mean, it's so important to have exactly. support because if you're doing it all by yourself, then you can also feel too stressed and get overwhelmed. Right. Do you ever get overwhelmed by it? <sighs> I get, yeah, I, yeah, because here's the thing. When I, you know, when you have a nine to five, you work. hmm and then you come home and you're off. Right. You're never really off doing this. Yeah. You're constantly thinking. Yeah. You're never you're never and, really off. So mm-hmm. I do get overwhelmed. But back to what I was saying, it's like every time I get overwhelmed, I'm like, gosh, I'm I'm sitting here talking for it. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> right. it's just it's so much fun. So, but I do sometimes. Yeah. Get overwhelmed. Of course. For sure. Especially because you said you never turn it off. So you're just constantly at night. I'll be up at like two in the morning. He's like, "What are you doing?" I'm like, "I have to research this person." I'm like watching TikToks on it, you know, just trying to. And it's it is the dream job. Like to me, it still feels like pretend. Like even now, I'm like feels like I'm back home pretending to be on a talk show with you. <laughs> Same. That's yeah. so funny. Yeah, it doesn't feel real because it does feel that mm. way. Oh my god. And that's what's so fun. But that's what I love. And I I love because we do have such similar backgrounds and I was like it's the same thing where you're like these kids in a small town where they told us like you know you can't that's not realistic because I yeah. didn't know what I want to be I was like I just want to be famous like actress yeah. I don't know something I'm like nobody does that like you nobody does that I was right. like, well somebody does you figured it out yeah and then Look the influencing thing happened I know that's what's so cool and so I'm the same way like of course it can be like stressful but it's like yeah Nothing else beats it. It's, it's so awesome, fun. dude. Yeah. And just constantly doing stuff like you love. And the touring is like so cool. Is that your favorite thing that you do right now? Oh, gosh. Uh, Yeah. Wow. Because here's the deal. I get so nervous before shows. Yeah. Like I'm talking right before a show, I will... I feel like I'm going to puke. Mm. I literally go, why am I do? Why do I do this? I want to leave. Like I get nervous, mm-hmm. but man, I'm not even kidding you. When I walk out on stage, it goes away. It's gone. Yeah. And I'm flying high the entire show. It is so much fun. The reaction the crowds have to you when you come out is wild. It's wild. Like I watched them again for the first time because I never been to the live show. I was watching the reaction. I was like, wow, that is crazy. Just you standing there, people go nuts. And you know what? I would say 90% of the venues we do, after every show, they'll always say, we've never had an audience that loud when someone walks out on stage. Wow. Just the fandom that you have is... Oh, it's it's insane. Yeah. It's awesome. I mean, that is cool. That's like the rush. I feel like if you have that in person, it doesn't like... You can't com- compare it to yeah. anything else. No, it's... That's what, ke- that's, like, that's what keeps me going. Right. On the road, dude, to see how people are excited to be there. It's like, oh my gosh, this is insane. And how did you even start that? Because did you have to find a touring company? Like, how does that work? That's a whole... So I had been toying with the idea of doing it, but mm-hmm. I was terrified terrified i was like i can't do stand up and i had an opportunity with a friend to do a show in dallas he pretty much was like hey i want to book this club but i want you to do the show with me never done stand up before and he goes i need an answer like this week and i was like oh my god i can't like i don't have any material like and i told him no wow. and he goes sit on it and i go okay it's gonna be no yeah but, you know? <laughs> and i got off the phone and i was sitting there and i go man, maybe this is the universe pushing me. Mm-hmm. Maybe this is the opportunity. I've Because I had been toying with the idea for about a year. And I go, maybe this is what I need. So I call him back and I said, book the show. I'll figure it out. And he goes, are you sure? I go, don't ask me again because yeah, yeah. I'm going to say, 
I go book it. So I had like two months to prepare some material. Oh my god! And we and uh, the show sold out within like five minutes. And they were like, "Do you want to add another show?" And I was like, "Okay." In five minutes, that sold out in like ten minutes. Do you want to add another show? I was like, "Okay." That sold out in like your first time ever doing stand up. Mm. And are you on Vine? Is that how people are? Or Vine what is had, this? had stopped. No, this was this was like two and a half years ago. Okay, so, so this, you're like mukbanging yeah, and stuff. Yeah, and Instagram and, and all that. Because I wasn't even on TikTok two and a half years ago, I don't think. Okay, so you're so, posting reels on Instagram and stuff. Cause Facebook. I was really big on Facebook then. Really? Mm-hmm. I didn't know that was like a thing. Uh-huh. Wow. Yeah. So um, I did the show wow. and I literally thought, okay, I'm either going to be absolutely horrible at this um, or I'm going to be decent yeah i may hate it or i'm gonna love it so i didn't know what i was gonna after that first show i i was like oh this is it it's on you know yeah oh my god and you never had any like improv training Mm -mm. nothing Mm -mm. that is wild stand-up's hard that's like probably the hardest form of entertainment oh yeah it's very hard because it's like literally just telling stories and trying to be funny and it's just Mm -hmm. like so hard because when people when you go see a musical artist you know the person's voice. Mm-hmm. You know the songs. You know what you know what you're going to hear with stand up. You don't. I mean, it's like you really have to really work to oh, yeah. keep them engaged because you're just sitting there listening to mm-hmm. stories mm-hmm. and even funny people. Sometimes their stand up just doesn't hit. You know, right. you're like right. mm, the stand up's not great. Right? Yeah. But um, no. After those shows sold out, oh gosh, everyone, everyone and their mom was reaching. Like, every agent wow. in the world was like. Let's set up a meeting. Let's set up a meeting. No way. Yeah. How do they know about it? How do they catch wind? Like, are you posting this on online? Here's what I'm thinking. Uh-huh. Um, I'm thinking they were following me. People Like, I'm talking like United, WME, all these big agencies. I think they were following me. And when they saw that I sold out shows, they came out and... Oh, yeah. And, like, this is money. Yes. Yeah. And also, I had a meeting with, like, all of them. And everyone had said, we thought you already had agents. Like, we we reached out, but we, you know, so everybody assumed I already had an agent. I'm like, I don't. Right, yeah, you're like, I'm doing this myself. Yeah. So I have spent, like, three days up here in L.A. just meeting, 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 meeting with all these agents and management companies. And I picked one that I loved, and I've been with them ever since. And oh, so you're with an agency. Mm-hmm. You're with a big agency now. Mm-hmm. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Because those agencies are like, yeah, it's, like, unheard of to get. I know. To get represented by them. You definitely have to have like referrals. Mm-hmm. Oh my, and you're happy. You're the, oh, yeah. Oh, so they're going to be able to pitch your shows and stuff for yeah. you. You have the connection. Because I feel like that's the hardest part is like getting connected to pitch. Exactly. Yeah. So exactly. they have those divisions, obviously. So I just need to take some time off from touring, really mm. put a pitch together and just go take over the world. Oh, it's going to happen. <laughs> now that I know you're worth like an agency, because it's like, how do you even, everyone wants a talk show or a TV show, but it's like, how does it happen? But if you haven't paid agency, you're going to yeah. crush it. Plus the plus the audience, plus the numbers are there. Like, it's, yeah. oh my God. So 2024 is our year, bitch. I'm ready for it. Me yes. Too. Oh my gosh. That's going to be <clears throat> so amazing. Mm-hmm. Wow. And then, oh my gosh, that's, that's so wild. So yeah. that all happened from your show selling out. Yeah. Wow. Insane. And I think after that first show, we planned a tour. Right, I mean, like we planned a tour within months. So they're helping you with the tour now. Oh yeah, they do all. Okay. The, yeah, we planned a tour and then COVID happened, so it had to be canceled. <sighs> and then, kind of twenty twenty one, we we started full time, and I haven't stopped since twenty twenty one. Wow, Touring. that's amazing. That is yeah. really really amazing. Yeah. Have you ever thought about like acting since you're with a big agency? Oh yeah, for like other people. That would be awesome. Um, I plan on writing a Tammy movie, so that's a goal I have. So good. Um, I've been in a couple little little movies. You have? Yeah. Like what kind? I was in um, Tangerine. What is that one? With Sean, uh, Sean Baker, that famous movie that was filmed on an iPhone that won a bunch of awards. Oh, years yeah. Ago. Were you like a supporting role in it? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Tangerine. I was in Dog Eat Dog. I got to make out with Willem Dafoe. Wait, what? Wait, first of all, amazing. How was that? I know. Oh my God, was he nice? It was so nice. And you were like making out with him? Yeah. Oh, what character are you playing? I played his like, I think his like ex-girlfriend or his like, you know, baby mama, like some like some sort of relationship. Oh yeah. Oh my God. I know. Wait, oh my God. I didn't know this about mm-hmm. you at all. Mm-hmm. Do you promote this though? I feel like I followed you for a while and I didn't know. Yeah, but the la- that was the last movie I did and that was in... Gosh, 2016, 18. So, it's, so I haven't wow. posted about it in years. 
Um, that's oh, but that's like before like your big mm-hmm, pop off. Then mm-hmm. oh my gosh, I audition for stuff all the time. That's amazing that you were casted so before you like really blew up because usually mm-hmm. you get stuff because of who you are, right. you know. But I wow. had I had they had. So I didn't audition for those. They found me on the internet from the video. So it wasn't big, big, but I had a little following. And that is literally my dream. That's what I've always put on the internet. I mean, maybe one day someone will cast me. Never happened. That's amazing oh, that that's happened to you. Yeah. It really is. Like again, unheard of. I don't know anyone who's been like scouted that way. Yeah. It's and no wild. agency. You don't have an agent at the time. Nope. Wow. Nope. It was them DMing me. I'm like, sure, I'll be in your movie. What? Wild. Oh my god, that is but so cool. But now I audition all. I'm auditioning all the you time. You do. So yeah. you're just doing like self tapes from Nashville or yep. something like that. Yep. Wow. What do you have any like big ones or I don't know if you can talk about it, but, like big ones that you like audition for that you like didn't get or did get? Yeah, I see it all the time. Stuff they audition for, and then I'll watch it on Netflix. I'm like, who got it? Oh, you'll you'll know the lines or something. Yeah, I'll just know the I'll know the show and I'll know the character. Oh, there's a big there's a big uh, show on. I forgot what it was called. It's like on FX or something that it really popped off. I auditioned for that, didn't get it. You do you know who got it? I did. It, I don't didn't know who the person was. Okay, so yeah, it's never like you see someone like oh, Sydney Sweeney got it or something yeah. like that. Oh yeah. no, her and I aren't going for the same. You never know though. Sometimes you see someone and you're like, oh, they got it. Okay, that makes sense <laughs> yeah. then. Yeah. <laughs> um, but there's been a few. Yeah, a few movies. Um, I auditioned. I actually got. Have you? Uh, uh what was that movie called? Um, The Florida Project. What? I don't know. Um. Willem Dafoe was in that. What? Oh my god! You guys just, are just I, synchronized. What's going on here? I love William Dafoe. I do too. <laughs> He's amazing. Um, I got cast in that movie, and then like two weeks before we were supposed to film, the director called me, and I, he had to uncast me because apparently Channing Tatum was supposed to play the Willem Dafoe's oh. role. Oh wow! And then Channing Tatum backed out, and so Willem Dafoe got it, and Willem Dafoe wanted more money than Channing, so it it switched the whole. Oh. Um, uh, just the whole budget of the movie. So instead of flying people from California, they had to get local Florida actors. Oh, and I told him I was like, I, I I'll go, be local. I go, I'll pay for my own flight. I don't yeah. care. And he was like, we can't legally do this. So, yeah, that's what so I've heard. I got cast in that movie. Was this what? Were you, was sort of Channing Tatum end up playing the role, or they went back to William Defoe? They went to William Defoe. Oh my god, that would have been so crazy. Yeah. That'd be so weird. <laughs> but I was flipping. Uh, and this was like in. 2018. It's several years ago. I can't remember. But I was flipping through Netflix, and it was like top ten movies and i was like oh, oh my god oh so i see man. it all the time i'm like mm, you know oh, wow but the fact that you've gotten those roles in like movies is amazing yeah so what you don't you said you don't watch a lot of tv but like do you have a dream role that you'd want to be on like some type of show or you know i you know how pe- you, i hear people say all the time like oh i don't want to be typecast i want to be a serious but i don't care <laughs> what i play i'll play this trailer trash all day long i'll do every trailer trash <laughs> character you need me to play that's the market like if you're that character you know you have that that's it you know as long as i get to be on set and be in a movie and be in a tv show and do this for a living i don't care what you want me to <laughs> yeah, do i'll be whatever for real <laughs> same way i'll do whatever <laughs> i'll do whatever yeah i mean that's a good mentality to have because like a lot of people don't want to play the same roles Mm-mm. wasn't there isn't there a tammy movie yes was it melissa mccarthy with melissa mccarthy do you think she, like I didn't ever saw it, but that was kind. Of, she was kind of like a trashy character, right? Yeah, I had a. I still have people being like, "Do you think she stole that?" I, I wondered. I don't because that movie came out about a year after I started the Tammy character on Vine. Uh huh. And I know how long it takes to write movies. Mm. To, she probably filmed that a year before, you know. So I think it was a coincidence. That is wild, though. Yeah, because she was. Kind of hit, like I don't want to say this derogatory because like trash I think now because sometimes when you say like trashy they're like yeah. that's rude or like even trailers because you don't really go by trailer trash Tammy you can't even say that anymore oh really is it event? I know everything now what do they say like what my, happened my handle is trailer trash Tammy but if you type that out like it gets taken you can't say trailer trash anymore I'm like oh gosh yeah no I know it's like this whole thing now but ten years ago we were saying trailer trash all you know so, oh but, yeah but, or hillbilly I know you're not supposed to say well I guess yeah. I get it but it's like yeah. so interesting so that but she plays that same type of character yep. she's very much interesting it, I think it was a coincidence for sure they should have had you in it at least oh <laughs> I know that would have been so good next one yeah oh my well if you have a Tammy movie yeah be Tammy too oh, I I, I want to act so bad. I I've, you know, and but here's the thing: like, if people aren't putting you in their movies and shows, that's why I created my own. Exactly. You know, yeah, for real. It's very yeah. I like uh, Sylvester Stallone, he did that yeah. with Rocky, Quentin Tarantino. Yep, it's exactly. So smart, and yeah. that's the, that is the truth because it's like people don't. 
so many people don't see it, especially Hollywood. I mean, obviously now you're with a big agency, but so many people can't see that. They're like, who's this person? Like, yeah. what? Like, mm. yeah. And, you know, just based on the way you look or act or whatever, they don't get it until they see like an audience getting it. And they're like, oh, actually now, okay. Exactly. We'll have you. But no, I, I my goal is to write a Tammy movie. And even if I just fund it on my own and slap it on YouTube, I would be so happy with that. That'd be so cool. Things don't even have to be big for me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, great. If if it if it's, has a big budget and it gets picked up in theaters that's wonderful but even if i slap it on youtube i just love doing it yeah so that even makes me happy oh yeah to make a movie i mean again unheard of to like little chelsea be like oh my god we made a movie you gotta be in it it. you gotta be in it please that's my only movie i everyone i know i'm like can i be in your movie i've literally known so many people throughout the years i'm like how come i've never been because that's like a dream right to be in like a movie any type of movie yeah oh you got manifesting it for you yes yes I'll write that you in. That would be amazing. Oh, my God. Well, you do have so many great cast of characters in your life. Uh, would you – so, Paige, how do you know Paige? Because you have viral podcasts. Yes. So, mm-hmm. I, I, I do the viral podcast. That's what it's called with my best friend, Paige. Mm-hmm. Um, we take calls from people. Um, it's – listen, that podcast is unhinged. Just a warning. Um, <laughs> just a warning, yeah. Um, I met her. This is funny. I met her. Um, she had contacted me, I would say, four years ago. She goes, hey, I know this is random, and I had didn't know who she was, never followed her, nothing. She goes, I know this is random, but I was approached by this production company to make an all-girls prank show, and you're the first person I thought of, because she does a lot of physical stuff, a lot of fake falls and stuff. Yeah, oh. She goes, um, and you're the first and only person I thought of, would you want to do this with me? And at first I'm thinking, we get approached to do stuff all the time that never happens or Mm. never, you know. We became friends. We met at that meeting. That was our first meeting. Became literally best friends at that meeting. Um, They, matter of fact, someone in the meeting goes, oh, Chelsea and Paige have been friends since high school. I go, we just met in the lobby. Oh, that's so weird. That's how, like, (laughs) instant it was. Yeah, they just felt the connection. So long story short, Paige and I spent two years prepping for this all-girls prank show. We filmed it for a very large network, I can't say. Okay. But take a guess, that's what it is. Okay. (laughs) Spent months filming it. Was supposed to come out last year, and they literally go, oh, we're not going to air it. Oh, wait, so you filmed the whole thing? Oh, yeah. (gasps) And did they give you the budget? Oh, we got paid for it. Okay. You know, not a ton, but we got paid for it. But it was two years of meetings, two years of prepping for it. We filmed for months. Um, I had to take off tour and, and film it. And uh, we were so excited about it. And, well, the thing was, they made us film it in the middle of the, the pandemic here in L.A. Oh, so. And they didn't want any masks in the show, but everyone was wearing masks. Oh. And it's like, how are you supposed to prank people? Is that why they said they didn't want to air it? That was part of it. It was a it was a whole thing. But we spent we spent two years of our lives dedicating to it. Oh it was supposed God. to be on the biggest platform. And, and they literally go, oh, we're passing. So, but that's how we met. Oh my god. And now gosh. we're best friends on a podcast together. We Yeah. Oh, but that that oh god, that's like the most like you said, it doesn't even matter how much money you get paid. It's so disheartening you put so much work yeah. and like that is the worst yeah. part. And you know, Paige was very upset by it, rightfully so, but yeah. I told her I go, Bro, look what came out of this. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Like we met each other, like I'm a very glass half full. I go, our time will come. We'll do something else. It'll it'll be bigger. It'll be better. And we found each other and we're best friends. So that's wild. Because I always thought too, you guys knew each other from high school because like this, Mm -mm. the chemistry you guys have and stuff like that. Because I was like, oh, you guys must know each other forever. Because I wondered when you were saying like, you know, you have this cast of characters around you. And I was like, how do you find people so talented? Like, I don't know that many talented people, but that makes sense if you found her or she Mm -hmm. found you through a creative. Yeah. No, she's she's like eight years younger than me. Wow. I'm like way older than her. Really? Yeah. Wow. Well, you look very young too. When I I didn't know your age, I remember one time I think I DM'd you and I was just like you said you were together I don't know what six some how many years with I've your been husband? with Greg for 18 years and I was like wait I thought you were like 25 like <laughs> you do look so young and you're like no and then I had to like look it up and I was like oh that's Thank crazy you. yeah what is the secret oh gosh oh lord I don't dude I don't diet I don't get Botox I don't no Botox I've never had Botox no I, wait I, can you do this with your forehead like that 
Oh my god, you don't have anything. That's crazy. Uh-uh. I already have some, and I had Botox like six months ago. Really? It's crazy. Oh, I said, I'm not. Oh, I'm not against none of that. But I just, I just don't. I, I don't. I don't know. I don't do any. I don't know. I don't you, know. You, you didn't, did you ever do tanning beds? Because I was like, no. our era, so you never did tan. I mean, that's the secret. Because you well, look very. Well, I've done them, but I wasn't like into it. Like yeah. if I'm getting ready for prom and I want a little Playboy right there. Did you, you know? do that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I love little Playboy stickers. Yeah. I was obsessed with tanning beds. I was yeah. so obsessed, but now I like look the age. But it's crazy. Yeah, I and people all always. They're like, I thought you were like 25. I'm like, oh no, I'm, I'll be 40 in four years. No. Okay, four years. Four years. Uh, me too. I'll be 40 in four years. Are we born the same year? Are you 88 or 87? 87. Okay, that's 88. So okay. I'm gonna be 36 this year. But okay. Oh yep. my gosh. Yeah. No, that's wild to think about when I'm like, Insane. oh my god, 40. But also, like, I I used to hate getting older, but now I'm like, ah, at least it's better than not being alive. You know yeah, what I mean? That's exactly how I look <laughs> yeah. at it. But it's just weird because you still feel 20. You're like, wait. <gasps> oh yeah. What? Where's the last twenty? What? It's crazy. When I like, I've had people that are eighteen years old TikTokers here, and I'm just like, oh, now I feel my age. I always think I'm also an eighteen year old influencer, and then you see them, and you're like, wow, yeah. And you know how people would always say, oh, it goes by fast, yeah. Or and you don't, you didn't really like get that, and now I'm like, Jesus Christ, it goes by fast. But on the flip side, I feel like because we feel young, I feel like a lot of people like seeing my mom at sixty five is not how we saw sixty five. Like the Golden Girls were fifty five, remember? Yeah. So I think it's like different now. Everyone's just feeling like younger, and yep, which is good. Yeah. You know, to feel twenty is exactly. a great thing. And if you feel that in your head, it's just hard with the influencer world. Like you are an influencer, but like, would you consider yourself? You don't really like collab with people. You don't really go to influencer parties. How did you? I've ne- I don't even know what that is. <laughs> You've never been to like? Do you go to VidCon and stuff? I went one time and okay. I said I'll never be back. Wait, why? Tell me. I went once too. I just this was uh, this was a long. This was years ago, and and I'm not a big crowd person. Mm. I'm not a big. I don't know. And I got like drugged there. I you know I had a friend like please come with me. I'm like okay. <sighs> I just was like I don't know. We went to this. um party afterwards and apparently there was a lot of like influencers and i didn't know who anybody was they were like oh do you you just met the biggest youtuber I'm like i don't even know who that was <laughs> you didn't know any youtubers nobody. i don't, knew nobody you didn't watch youtube or no. wow and i still don't i literally think you might be the only one i'm not just saying that <laughs> i'm not just saying that <laughs> me and nick Akato, because you collabed nick Akato. nick Akato, you a lot of true crime stuff. That's all I watch on YouTube. <laughs> really? That's mm-hmm. so wild. And I'm more into your TikToks now than the YouTube. Oh, I'm, I'm yeah. A, I watch all your TikToks. No, so. YouTube. I love YouTube, but it is going downhill. My mm-hmm. main channel, I think it's like 20. I still post. I'm like, whatever. I'm still posting, yeah. but it's like 20,000 people. As for TikTok, you know, you get like 18 million views. Right. You're like, well, I'm going to go over here. I mean, it doesn't pay, but exactly. it's, you know, just that. But I do I do love TikTok. I'm on the TikTok train, too. I've been TikToking, man. I love it. Me I know. Too. You're a full-time TikToker. You, like, put work into it. You put like cuts and edits. And yeah. To me, that's like a lot of work. I used to not, I used to not post. I would literally post like once every three months. And the last few months I've been like, I'm going to try to post on a regular. So it's been going good. Do you notice like a difference? Just like a different audience? Are they younger? Or are they like your audience? My audience is all over the place. Really? Do you have like young, old? Yes. Both. Females, male? Do, when people that come to the shows, I mean, it's mostly white women, 25 to 40. Oh, really? Yeah. That's, that's a great like, audience. That's like my core. But wow. but I've got people, I have super old people that come to shows. Really? Young people. I have people from all walks of life. I once had a doctor um, come to a meet and greet uh, in his scrubs and he goes, I canceled a surgery to be here. Oh my God. I'm like, what? <laughs> Great. So it's just like a mix. Every, it's all over the place. Wow. Do you have any international? Have you gone international? Not yet. Not, are you going to? Well, we, we had a show in Canada. Um, okay. So I guess that's international. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> technically. Not European. Yeah, <laughs> right, yeah. Because right, right. I wonder how they react over there. Like, do you have that fan base? Like, Europeans, like, reacting to your character? I think so. I have a large Australian fan base. Wow. How so random. I need to go do some shows in Australia. I feel like Australian is a good market. I know so many people go over there. They have like a VidCon over in Australia. Oh, okay. Yeah, they do like a lot of social media stuff over there. Okay, yeah. How did you find that out? You just see your like analytics or something like that. I just have a lot of people messaging me from Australia. Please do shows in Australia. Please do shows in Australia. I don't check none of analytics. No, never? I've been on there once, I think. Wow. Dude, it's bad. Okay, can I just say... <laughs> It's bad. I'm I'm not very tech savvy. I feel like an elderly woman when it comes to like, and I don't know how I've made what? a living on the internet. That's what I wonder. Like if you're uploading your stuff to like Patreon and stuff, I mean, you got to have a little I, bit of tech savvy. I, I, I know how to like clip, upload. <laughs> clip pieces together and push upload and that's about it. <laughs> wow. But um, uh, no, I once had a, a friend tell me who, who does what we do and he was like, um, 
he was like, oh my gosh, if you got on your analytics and knew how to, knew when to post and what to post, you could be making so much more money. And I'm like, uh, bro, I'm not doing all it's that. Compl- that stuff's complicated to me. It's like, what's the opportunity time to post? I'm like, I post when I post. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. But I know there is like a science to it, but. There is, yeah. but I'm not about to study it. No, especially when you have so much other stuff going on. You're like, right. I'm good. I'm right. getting the views. It's fine. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. How did like the, well, because wardrobe, he has like, I got to wear a muumu. You guys went to, I think all of you guys went to Red Lobster and Moomoo's, which is like my favorite because I'm, I'm a chain restaurant person. I'm from the Midwest, so I'm like, ah, oh, chain restaurant. Yes. Where does, like, the wardrobe for Tammy come from? Because I love your vibe, the wolf shirt, everything. So I'm a big Etsy, YouTube, vintage T-shirt. Oh. I will get just, you know, the Reba T-shirts, the vintage wolf T-shirts, um, the, uh, you know, Brooks and Dunn. T- I'll just get, like, any any sort of rock or country 90s T-shirt, sleeves got to be cut off. Oh, yeah, always, Those yeah. sleeves got to show, I got to bring the guns out. <laughs> And then I have one pair of shorts, and they are my husband's college football shorts. The blue ones. The blue ones. Love those shorts. They look so comfy. And that's what Tammy wears. And if I ever lose those shorts, <laughs> I'm screwed. Where did it come from? Like, where did the short? Where did you put the two together? Oh gosh, I don't know. I think I just randomly. I don't know. I thought Tammy's not a jean. She's not a jean short girl. No, she's a basketball shorts. Flip flops. Yeah. yeah. And it just stuck. I've, she's never worn anything else. The t-shirt will change. The short stay. I love that so much. Mm-hmm. The wolf ones are hard to find because we ordered the pink one. It didn't come in in time. And then we literally went around to like the mall, Venice Beach, like all these things looking for these wolf shirts. They don't come in pink. But also they just don't come in general. Like the yeah. navy blue, they're so hard to find. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to you gotta thrift v- them. vintage and thrift them on Etsy and stuff. Mm, they're expensive on Etsy. They're they like are. 80 bucks for like a vintage you shirt. Get a, uh, you get a good one. Yeah, they are. What about this? Is this vintage or is this like a screen? I got this. I think I got – I'm first off, I'm obsessed with Kevin James. Okay. So this – would he – him or Pedro? Who would you rather Kevin collab James with? is my number one. Wow. Wait, like King of and Queens? Do- or? And Dr. Phil. But Kevin James. <laughs> Actually, you're like funny, Dr. Phil. Like you're being ironic. Both, but I do love Dr. Phil. You do. I love him. Have you been on? I feel like they used to ask influencers all the time. No, but I've been in the audience. Oh. <laughs> I've been in the audience. Like, so did I they just, ask you or you just went? No, I just went. <laughs> I, I signed up and got the tickets and stood in line. And <laughs> They pay a lot of the audience, too. You could just sign up on LA Casting. I didn't get paid. I'd do it for free. Right. That's why I was like, um, oh, they probably could have paid you for it. But, but no, I, I got this. I literally got on Etsy. And I think I typed in Kevin James t-shirt and it popped up. I go, that's mine. I mean, who made that? Like, I, it's so- <laughs> I love it. But I love King of Queens. I love Kevin James. Um, I just met him for the first time like a month ago. Maybe a Wait, ago. what? Did you do anything with him or just? I don't think you knew who I was. I um, He had a show in Kentucky. It was like two hours from us in Nashville. And I was like, oh, we're going. So we drove up. And I don't normally, at the two times I've asked for tickets or to meet people was the Winona. And then I, I texted my manager. And I was like, hey, do you, do you know Kevin James? Like, do you have any ties with Kevin James? And he goes, oh, I'm, I, I, I actually know his manager. Wow. We used to work together. I was like, bro, I'm on my way to the show right now, his show in Kentucky. I go, <sighs> can you just see? Can you just, because he doesn't do meet and greets or nothing. And it happened. He had two shows. And they go, his assistant's going to meet you down in the lobby after no. the first show. He was so nice. Oh, I love that. I love when you meet your idols and they're nice. <gasps> I kept it quick. You know, I, yeah. was, I didn't want to keep his time. I knew we had another show. I just said, I, was, uh, I said, we drove up from Nashville to see you. I go, I'm a huge fan. He was so nice. I kept, it was like 30 seconds. We got a quick picture. And then we were leaving and he turned around and we heard him go, oh, that was so sweet. Oh my God. God, you all love me before. Oh, did you post the picture? Yeah, it's on. It's on my Instagram. I don't think I've seen it because I went through your Instagram. Track. I have to look now again. Oh my gosh, I what's he him. like? Is he tall? Is he short? What's his? Uh, he he he's not short, but I'm so tall that everyone's short to me. But right, he was like you know he was much shorter than me. I always wonder you look because like Leah Remini on the show is obviously like tiny, so you're just like tiny. what is he like? It like is comparison. Uh, I, he just had a stand up special come out. Did you watch it? I yeah, I've saw. I haven't watched it, but it's the same material from from when I saw oh, him. Okay, the show. I just saw a clip literally this morning about him talking about his doctor saying he's pre diabetic. Yes, that one I thought was like so funny, and yeah. I was like, isn't that like truly the case? Like you're, he's like, so I don't have diabetes. Like no, I never saw stand up. I don't know anything about him like that. But yeah. I was like, oh, it's good. Or on Jimmy Fallon, he was just on. Did you see that? Mm-hmm. He was talking about the meme and how oh, it came yeah. about, and he was just like. Yeah, the photographer had me do these weird things. And he's like, don't worry, no one will see that one or whatever. And then he's like, now it's everywhere. He did the meme for Jimmy Fallon. That's hilarious. I love that he like plays into it, yeah. you know? Because so many people, when you talk about the meme, they're just like, ugh, you know, whatever. But I love him. I <laughs> he love is good. Him. I never really watched King and Queens. Though. Oh, it's, I, should I watch it? I don't to know. To me, 
out of all the 90s comedy, early 2000s comedy, it's the best one, in my opinion. Really? Well, because of the dad, Arthur Spooner. Go watch. Okay. I see clips on TikTok and I do love it. I'm always like, this looks funny. And I love Leah. Oh, I'm a big fan. I love her too. I don't know. I guess maybe I should watch it. So good. Yeah. I just feel like the ones of the clips I always see on TikTok, I don't know if it's like catered to me, is always like, they always make like fat jokes and it always makes me a little sad. Because <laughs> I feel like the 90s, they always like home improvement, there's always fat jokes. I'm like, God, this is going to like trigger me, I feel. <laughs> yeah. Because his is always like losing weight and stuff. And I'm like, oh man, that's like sad. They were wild back then. Yeah. They literally didn't care if they were fat phobic. <laughs> They're like, you're going to not eat. <laughs> I know. <laughs> okay. I have to watch it. I have to see. It's set oh. in New York, right? King of Queens, yeah. obviously, New York. It's so good. Interesting. So that's yep. your favorite. So I met him. Um, gosh, what? What else has been going on? Yeah. Well, you're here in LA now, so you've just been doing like podcasts. Yeah. Podcasts. Um, just promoting the tour. Come see me on tour. Yeah. Where do you get tickets? Well, is there tickets left? There are some, yeah, there are some tickets left and here's my website for tickets. You ready? And this is real. This is my real website. Eatmytrash.com. So good. Oh my God. That's I, a I great snagged URL. that. <laughs> I can't believe it was available. <laughs> I got it. Shocking. I got it. <laughs> no, it is actually very good. It is really nice. Thank you. <laughs> what a crazy yes. Yeah, so you can put eatmytrash.com. Yep. I have to come out here to LA every every few months and like just, you know, if someone wants to collab on something, I don't collab a lot, but um, you know, whoever, if whoever wants to make a TikTok or do a podcast, I just do whatever. I love that because we were talking about one that I know, and I was just like, oh, it's like it's just like a smaller podcast, and you're like, yeah, I didn't even know that. I just said yes. Yeah. So I was like, love that. And you're like, they're so nice, they're so great. I was like, that's amazing. Yeah. Oh, I'll be on anybody's podcast, dude, for real. Like, it's just so much fun. And I had somebody reach out. Uh, I forgot what podcast it was. I haven't done it yet. And they're like, Chelsea, we we only get about 500 downloads a month. We don't know if you. I'm like, I don't give a shit. Where did you do it? I, I'm going to. I'm like, we're Tell me when and where. Wow. Like, I'm, I'm and hang you're out. so mobile because I'm like, we can get you a car. You're like, I can drive. You drove here. Yeah. Like, and we're kind of far out too. So I was like, wow, it's really amazing. Oh, yeah. The hustle you have for it. Thank so you. So who's all out here with you right now? Right now, it's me, um, Paige, who I do my podcast mm-hmm. with. And then Libby Higgins, who is a comedian. Um, she opens for me. She's the McRib lady. Yes. Yes. Amazing. Everybody knows the McRib lady. Which also seems like not a character. Like I just thought, oh, this is just like these people that you know from Oklahoma or something. She's good. <laughs> yeah. No, they are very good. good. They seem so real. Yeah. She does stand up. And so she opens all the shows. People love her. That's, you know. How did you meet her? I met her on Vine. What? Was she doing her character on Vine? Yeah. Wow. And I met her and I started following her when neither of us had followers. Wow. That's so I cool. just saw a video and thought she was funny. I mean, she had like a hundred, like no fault, you know, and we both just took off. Wow. That's so cool. And that's then really she cool. was, a, uh, she was a special education, education teacher for 22 years doing stand up in St. Louis. And when I got my agents and booked a tour, I called her up and I said, Hey, you want to quit your job? Oh my, oh my God. I go, you want to come on tour? And she was like, yeah. Wow. And we've been torn ever since. Wow. So since like the beginning, mm-hmm. basically, that's amazing. Oh my God. So not only did you get to do that for like your husband, your sisters, but your like friends too, people in your vicinity. Everybody's quitting. <laughs> I love that. That is Everybody's such a dream. Qu- yeah. You're like the Adam Sandler of the YouTube world. Like everyone's coming with. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like just. Quit your fucking. job. Let's go. Wow. That's so cool. Yeah. So they're all out here with you. Yeah. Is your husband here? No, he's back. He's back home watching our little dogs. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. so that's hard. So, how do you guys like? How does he come to your shows and stuff like that? Do you just have like dog watchers? So my so my sister lives right down the road. It's mm-hmm. like a less than five minute drive. Mm-hmm. Um, so when I'm on tour, sometimes we'll take a, a dog or two. Sometimes we leave them. She she watches them. Okay. What yeah. kind of dogs are they? Oh my gosh, I have a little. They're both like this big. I have a little Japanese chin named Gary. A Japanese chin? I never heard of that. What's a chin? Oh my gosh. <laughs> what I'll does it look like? Is it fluffy or he's a little hairless? He's a little fluffy. Okay. No. Um, and then I have a little um she's a Miki, M I K I. Okay. Um, but she's um I got her when she was a year old. She's adopted, but she looks like a Maltese, but she's real little. Oh. I'll show you a picture of them. The little what are their names? Tilly and Gary. Okay. Okay, they're kind of like kid names. I yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> Why Tilly and Gary? I love the hum- I love human names for I dogs. I think that's cute. That's everything. I like dog names for humans. Oh, <laughs> I, I love so that. That's fun. That's <laughs> Everyone's funny. Everyone's dogs named Melvis. I'm like, that's my baby's name. So okay, <laughs> <laughs> that's fine. I uh, love it. So where Tilly and Gary come from? Like the names? Yeah. Like where did you? Just random. I, I just love the I name. I loved them. I love the names. And I, I met a dog yesterday, and the dog's name was Susan. Loved that. Oh my god, Susan dog is so cute. I know. Yeah. I just thought the names were cute. He just looked it. like a Gary. 
I know. need to see. I need to see a picture I of know. Carrie. We got to pop one up on oh, the screen for everybody. Yeah, yeah, let's insert it. We have a okay. B-roll. <laughs> That's so cute. You have two dogs. How old are they? Tilly's eight. Gary's three. Oh my gosh. So, oh, that's a she, little bit of a gap. Yeah, yeah. she was kind of getting older and, and getting lazy. And I go, she needs a little puppy to keep her up. To keep her up. You yeah. know, so that's what we did. And that's exactly what's been, yeah. Wow. Do you miss them when you're like out here? Oh, it kills me. Oh my God. Because it's like kids. It's like, I, I never had dogs, but I know my sister is like, that's her children, mm-hmm. like basically. Yeah. That's, that's, oh, that's, <sighs> yes, it kills me. Does it ever frustrate you? I was wondering, as like a dog parent, that they can't talk. I always think about, I'll literally sit there and I go, what's, what's she thinking about right, right now? And they communicate, but they can't verbally communicate. Are are they happy? Yeah. Do I make them happy? Oh, I think about it. It consumes my life. I can't imagine. Yeah. When I see the dogs, I'm just like, well, they want to say something and they can't. How frustrating. Like kids, like babies cry, but dogs are just like forever non-vocal. I know. I think about it all the time. That's so funny you say that. <laughs> I think about it all the time. I always wonder because I'm like, they are like kids, but the thing is they just never can talk to you. It's like, that's sad. That makes me like sad. I know. <laughs> it kills me. You're tearing up. Oh I my know. Gosh. I was just like, when I think about my baby not talking yeah. and then I was like, well, one day she'll be able to. And yeah. then I'm like, the yeah, dogs, yeah. they can't. Yeah. No, they just lick you and you can, they have a, a form of communicating with you, but it is frustrating because I'm always like, oh my gosh, just, I want to know what he's thinking about right yeah. now. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That's amazing. And then your family, are you close with your mom? And so I, here, get ready for it. Buckle up. Get okay. ready for a ring dinger here. <laughs> I always get worried to ask this question. <laughs> oh, I don't okay. mind talking about okay. it. I've talked about it a lot. Okay. Um, but I, you know, I was raised by my grandmother when Mm. we were, I was 12 when we got taken away. My parents, um, a lot of meth going on, a lot of alcohol going on. It was, I had a very rough childhood. Um, so we got taken away when I was 12. Um, we were ward of the States in Oklahoma. So we were like, like the state was our guardian. If that makes sense. You know what that is? Like, not really. Are you like in a home? Are you like a foster home? Well, we could have been, but my, um, my grandma took us in, but she never had legal custody, so we we were custody of the state. Oh, so what does that mean? It just meant we get free health care, oh, okay. which was great. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Did you get no. like paid like food for the government and stuff like that? Oh, we like food stamps and stuff. Absolutely, okay, yes, that's... absolutely. Okay. Um, but uh, no, my mom has passed away. My mm. dad's still alive. Uh, we don't have much of a of a relationship with mm. him. He follows me. So that's cool. Do you ever talk to him through DMs or something? Sometimes he'll like, you know, message me on Facebook and he's like, hey, can you send me some t-shirts? And I'll be oh, like, all right. Well, that's better than like money. <laughs> <laughs> he's asking for t-shirts. Yeah. So I'll send him some merch, you oh, know. Oh, how, how odd. He asked for a cat. Ca- oh my God. This. So I do a calendar every year. I was going to ask you about that because that's okay. so iconic. That's we- so 90s bombshell. Like, let's have a calendar at Carmen Electra. We can get into that. Baby. Okay. I need to know. Um, so I do a calendar every year and it is a topless calendar, but, but it's. But it's, I gotta send you one. Um, Please. But it's as Tammy. So it's a funny. Okay. It's a funny count. It's, it's not meant to be taken seriously. Like we were saying, like Tammy thinks she is like the hottest thing. So it's her way of thinking, you know. Yeah. And it's just the most ridiculous thing you've ever seen. Um, and it's people, I mean, they almost sell out every year. Like it's a big thing. Um, and my dad, my dad had messaged me like a month ago. And he was like, hey, all the guys at work want one of your calendars. Can you send a calendar? Oh my God! Did you? Yeah, I don't care. I was like, I was like, all right, whatever. I don't care. <gasps> That's what I'm saying. There's so many guys out there that probably don't think of it as like comedy. They're like, ooh, boobs, big boobs. Yeah. Like, let's get that. You know. Well, the biggest women, women by ninety percent out of all the calendar sales, ninety percent are women. Oh, I believe it. I used to buy all the Playboys and stuff like that. Yeah. That's for sure. I think mm-hmm. it's like because women appreciate women's like bodies like mm-hmm. a lot more than men. Other than there's those men like your dad's coworkers who are like, yeah. I want to see boobs. I know, dude. <laughs> Which is cool too. I like that because growing up in like the '90s, that was so boob based. Everyone was yeah. boob based, so that makes sense. Yeah. Wow, that's yeah. Wild. I was like, Dad wants a calendar, y'all. Like, <laughs> I know that should be in your show somewhere. There, <laughs> that's true. That's funny. Tammy's dad. That's <laughs> wants the top fun. That's calendar. funny. <laughs> Wow. Oh my gosh. So your dad, and he doesn't ever want to like meet up or anything. He just wants the merch. No, we don't. We'll see him every few years and it's fine when we do, but there's just no like father daughter relationship there. Um, but no, my, yeah, we were raised by my grandma. I had, I did have Mm. a very rough childhood. I talk about it a lot. Um, I think that's just where my humor comes through. I was Mm. just trying to survive, you know, like 
We, we, we did have it rough growing up. What did you feel like when you were in school, like the kids knew, cause you said you only had 12 kids. So like they knew you didn't have parents or they, so here's the, here's the good thing about where I'm from is like, like everybody had something going on like mm-hmm. that. I never felt like, a, like I was like, not, you know, I never felt like everybody was poor. Right. Everybody was had, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I never felt, you know, isolated in that way. Um, I loved where I grew up. Everybody, dude, as a matter of fact, I loved high school. Really? Yes. Okay, so I have 12 people. Are you like, you're just friends with everybody at that point? Right. Yeah. I think in the in our whole high school, uh, junior high and high school was together. There was like 100 people. Okay. Um, But I, now if I would have went to a huge high school, I may not have been saying the same thing. Right. But I loved it. Yeah, you Just playing everyone. sports and working at Sonic and playing softball. And I loved it. Oh, so you were like athletic in high oh, school? Yeah. Oh, wow. That's so cool. I played softball in college wow yeah oh so you're like good at it so you're like coordinated and stuff yeah i'm just not coordinated at all what position you think i played <sighs> i don't even know about baseball i'm gonna say catcher okay first base okay what does that mean because i got those long legs so you know how they do like the splits you ever oh, seen did that? you do that oh yeah i was splitty oh wow really so like because first base too don't you have to like well, I guess you're just constantly there. Someone has to like throw you the, because you have to be a good catcher and yeah. stuff too. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yep. Okay. I was good at the splits. Can't do them now, but. Wow. You can't, yeah. I feel like you could, cause you're physical. You are physical too. When you're with your comedy, like you're like whipping yeah. your head back and doing the most. Yeah. And, well, I haven't tried in a few years. I need to try. Oh my God. Do the splits. I might could split. Oh my God. Do that on your Patreon. Yeah. <laughs> on my Patreon. <laughs> on your calendar. Right. right. <laughs> Naked split. Right. Are you just topless on your counter? Are you full? Just topless. Okay. I'm always wearing bottoms or something's covering something. That's cuter. I yeah. like a full nudity, but it is kind of odd. It's like, oh, here's just a full. Oh, I cannot imagine <laughs> having my beaver out in a calendar. I could not. It's always kind of funny. I like, or your butt. I just think butt's <laughs> yeah, cute. I've, I feel done like some, I've done some good ass shots. You have, like yeah. with a little like drape behind you. Have you ever done a, like you do your Tammy calendar. Have you ever done a glamorous calendar? So I, this will be my first year I do one. <gasps> Oh my god! Have you done? Have you shot yet for it or not no. yet? Okay, no, so twenty twenty four. We haven't started yet, and it will not be topless. I'm gonna do just a glam. Okay, and it'll be it'll be like very. So we sell a lot of the Tammy calendars. Mm-hmm. We're not gonna sell a lot of these. This will be just like I'm gonna release only a certain amount. I want it to be more exclusive, mm-hmm. and we're gonna do some looks. What are you gonna do? Are you gonna do inspired by looks or just totally you? Both. I okay. want to mix of both. I I, I do want to do a uh, a little. Um, Shania Twain in the desert leopard print. Oh, oh, vibe. okay. <laughs> I love that. That is probably just gonna hitchhiking with my little round. Ooh. Oh, I, I, so I have to have an outfit made for that. Oh, yeah. So there's a little sneak peek. Or I'm gonna Ooh. do, but everything else will be a surprise. Okay. But how fun! That's gonna be so cute. So it's gonna be so maybe just like country. Is it gonna be all country theme or you no. think okay, just a little bit of everything? No, I'm gonna do a little bit of everything. I have some ideas. Um, you recreating iconic looks just in general because I love doing cosplay, obviously, and you doing iconic looks is. Because no one really does it, you know what yeah. I mean? And so when you see yourself like as the Maryland on the beach, I was like, oh my God, that's so genius. Especially the shots you choose, like the Shania Twain, like Leopard. Like it's just like one you don't see very yeah, often people recreating. Exactly. I- iconic, dude. Yeah, that would be so cool. I remember cool. seeing that music video as a kid and being like, oh, oh. my God. Yeah. No, Shania Twain was like breathtaking. You're just like, wow, she's so gorgeous. Oh, gorgeous. And the outfit. I was, oh, so that when <sighs> I decided to do a Chelsea calendar this year, that was my, I go, I've got to recreate that. Looks have to. So cool. Yes. Do you have like a whole glam squad that you work with? I have a, f- no, I have a, I have I, several people mm-hmm. and I'll kind of go, you know, around. I have like one girl that does my hair and then I have like three makeup artists I love here in wow. LA. So, yeah. Oh, there's so many here in LA. I know. I know. I and, remember we worked with the same people at the same time. I think Adam. Do you remember Adam Simmons? Yes. I remember he was doing it. He's like, she's so funny. And this is before, again, I knew you were a character and I was like, really? I was like, <laughs> okay, well, obviously you don't know like the people I come from, whatever. And then I was like, but I remember he was like, she's so funny, the most hilarious person. And I was like, I didn't, I never watched anything. And I remember, but I remember seeing the pictures and I was like, she looks so different. Yes. I was like, that's so great because I just know you as Tammy. And then when yeah. I saw you as like Glam Chelsea, I was like, yeah, wow. put some makeup on me, dude. I'm unrecognizable. Isn't it? <laughs> that's everyone. Yeah. I feel like that, yeah. which is beautiful. That's like yeah. art. You know what I mean? Just being a different person. Yeah. Have you ever like auditioned for it? Like when you were younger or been approached by SNL? So I, yes. So you have to be invited to audition for, to SN, for SNL. Oh, wow. You can't just go. Uh, audition. You'd be invited. And I got invited last year to audition. And that was, that was insane to me. Oh my God. That alone, I was flabbergasted by. Oh my God. Did you do the audition? I didn't. What? I know. What? 
Why? I didn't because what? I was on tour and I needed to put together a whole thing. It was a lot of like I would have to put together a mm. whole spiel pretty much. And and I was like, you know, I feel like I feel like I would totally do SNL, obviously, but I just it just didn't feel like where I was supposed to be. Yeah, it's just a different feel altogether. Like you have your established character. Right. Which was yeah. mind blowing to me because I was like, oh, year, years ago, I would have just absolutely loved. <gasps> I would have been so, ri- I would have thought it would be ridiculous if I passed up the opportunity. Oh but it just didn't feel right. I was like, I I feel like, yeah, I just didn't feel right. And I was like, I'm just not going to do it. You're, you're where you're meant to be. You're like your own boss, your own character. You have things all going. That makes sense. But to get invited, I guess, would be that full circle moment where you're like, yeah. That's good enough for me. That, it really it really was. <laughs> yeah. That was good enough for me. That they would even offer that. I feel like you'll probably end up going back, but maybe as like a host or something. Like if you get oh. your show or movie, they let's, have to. Let's put it out oh there. Oh my God. Because that's how it was. Has, no influencer has done it, right? Because like, I mean, I know you're not just an influencer, but yeah. I'm like, has any YouTuber I done it? I don't think so. Huh, I'm don't. surprised. Yeah. Like no Logan Paul or anything Mm-mm. like that. I mean, yeah. it'd be hard. I mean, influencers are funny in their own right, but I think it'd be really hard. But I think because you do stand up, you would be able to do yeah. it. And you do character work. Yeah. Did you watch it growing up as a kid? Yes. Yeah. So that was like the era, like the Phil Hartman and. Oh, mm-hmm. um, Molly Shannon. Oh, well, Will Ferrell, Chris Kattan, oh, Sherry O'Terry. Those were great. Those were like Jimmy Fallon. Those oh. were like so, so good. Oh, man. I will go back and watch old episodes, <sighs> and it's just. SNL in that era. Oh my Molly god. Molly Shannon's so good. I'm surprised she's not in more stuff. I love her. She was she's in White Lotus season one. She's she, oh I'm, so okay, good. I'm watching it. I'm you watching have it. To. She's so, and she's like really good in it too. Okay, done. You know, I feel like those Chris Cattell was so funny too. And I'm like, where did he go? Love him. Yeah, like he was so funny. He was right he up does, there with Will Ferrell. Yeah, he does stand he travels and does stand up. Oh, does he? He he follows me on Instagram <gasps> and and Night at the Roxbury is my favorite comedy movie of all time. So good. And when he started following me, I think I cried. Oh my god! Did you message him? I I have a couple times. There's been a little back and forth, but we don't like you know we're not close or nothing. Oh my god! But he I is, lost it. He's like a legend. He's such a legend. Legend. It's interesting because I wonder if you collab with him, not in like a shady way, but I wonder if people like know who he is, like the new generation. I know because he just doesn't do mainstream stuff. Right. But right. he was so iconic. I mean, Night at the Roxbury was so good. I did a short film with like Richard Grieco when I had money. Oh. I was like, give all this money to Richard Grieco for Night at the Roxbury. <laughs> I haven't seen that. Oh Where's that at? It's like a short film I did for Halloween. I don't know what it was called. I don't even know what it's called. Viral video was what it was called. And it's like literally me and I hired like 10 people and like Richard Grieco to be my stalker. <laughs> I think we did a kiss. I think we had a kiss. I'm sure I wrote that in there. It's like, let's have a kiss in <laughs> you here. Got, you He's got, like my stalker, but I'm like, let's kiss. <laughs> you got, oh, I need to watch that. Yeah. And I just remember him being in Night the Roxbury, like Richard Grieco uh-huh. the Mighty Duck Man. Mm-hmm. And I just thought Swear it was like God. so good. Yeah. Yes. Oh, that was Amelia Estevez. But then Richard Grieco yep. came 21 Jump Street, came to That's what oh. it was. Oh, God. Jennifer Coolidge was in that movie, too, yes. as the sexy cop. That movie is so iconic to me. That movie molded my whole life <laughs> and childhood, and I think it just made me want to go into comedy. It's so good. No, that is like, yeah, everything. Even their skits with like Jim Carrey, <sighs> Pamela Anderson. It's like, I wanted to be them so much. Oh, if you've never seen Night at the Roxbury, watch it, It's please. a classic. It's so, so good. All of those. Oh. And it's so dumb. And right. I love dumb mm. comedy. They don't have those anymore. Like just, just I can't stuff think of. that's just just that is ridiculous yeah. is what I love. It's so good. And Chrissy Ugh. Tan was good at that. He did like even Corky Romano, which people didn't like. I'm like, but it's like that's what it is. So good. Dumb comedy. I love it. But then I do you watch do you watch like the like the grown ups and stuff with like Kevin James? Do you like think those are funny, those movies? I love all of them. Mall cop. Love. You I really love, are Kevin James. I love <laughs> Kevin James. <laughs> Like him, I think he's funny, but you watch like Paul Blart and you're like, mm, okay. People are always like, Ooh, who's like your Hollywood crush? I'm like, Kevin James and Dan Connor. Oh, well, Dan Connor was the ultimate. He was always gorgeous to me. I oh. always wanted to marry someone like him. Oh, and people are like, really? Not, and, and obviously, I love the Pedros and you know, yeah, but they're like, really? You're it's not going to be like some mm. beefy guy. I'm like, oh, give no. me. Give me a chubby, funny daddy. Yeah. And a good one. Like, Dan Connor would go, like, beat Jackie's, like, abuser boyfriend. He's like, I'm, I am gotta leave. Come back with, like, butt knuckles. You're like, oh, yeah, that's oh. the person I want to marry. He is so good. God, I relate. Did you watch the new Connors? I did. Did I, you I, like I, it? I, I did like it. You did? I did. Yeah, I Without haven't. Roseanne. Oh, no, I watched it with Roseanne. Wasn't she on it for, like, oh, one? Oh, maybe. But then she kind of left. And then, she did. Yeah. I watched the first few episodes, and I really... I, 
didn't I stopped watching it, but mm. I didn't watch it without her. Yeah, it's like not the same. I love no. Roseanne too. I really no. liked her. Well, I don't know now. I know she's like political. I don't know anything about her now. But I remember growing yeah. up, I was like, ooh, I want to be that too. Because yep. again, just seeing someone that looks like different. I don't know. I always related to like Roseanne. I was like, I that'd know. be me. Especially she was Midwest and quote unquote trashy, you know, yep. their house or whatever. Like that's like it was very relatable. That's what I loved about it. I wish they had more of those. That's what I'm saying. I Tammy know. needs to come back because there's so many people who relate to it, and then there's so many people who just find it funny too. You yeah. know what I mean? And I like. I think we need more of those instead of like gossip yeah. girl. And thank you. I always say that you know people love people love Tammy because like. Everyone knows a Tammy. You don't have to be from the South. You don't have to be from a small town. Everyone can relate to knowing a Tammy. And if you, I would say, if you don't, then you are the Tammy. (laughs) Like, if you don't know Tammy, let's look at yourself. (laughs) I would probably be the Tammy for sure. That's why I think I fought it for so long. (laughs) Because that's how I was looked at for sure. I was like, that's definitely me. I'm the Tammy. I love it. I wasn't like loud like that, but I I do admire that in her character. Just in general. I love people who can like fight back. Like I feel like Tammy in the Sonic position, like if someone threw a burger at her. Oh, you're (laughs) right. That that would be a funny skit. Yes. To get your redemption, to get a little validation back for you. That's funny. Because like what? She would what? Throw it back? I don't even. Oh, (laughs) shit. See where it goes. Oh, yeah. You'd be like Saltburn where you just like improvise the scene. All of a sudden you're just like on top of a grave. (laughs) That's funny. All right. Well, when I go back to the Sonic to work, I'm filming some TikToks. I cannot wait. Oh, my. Sonic, I'll come too. I want to come to Sonic. Like I, that's my dream. I did one. I did Raising Cane's and it was the best day of my life. It's so fun. I loved it. But Sonic (laughs) is just so much cooler with the roller skates and stuff. Oh, gosh. Uh, You had a, I was watching a Tammy video and you were at Arby's and you were showing the mozzarella sticks. Do you remember this one? And you're like tapping on the stick. Yeah. And then I, I was like, ooh, those look so good because Arby's is my jam too. And really? I was like, you make I, the food look so good. I tap on everything. So that's the thing. That's the thing that she, and it's so, once again, it means nothing and it's ridiculous. It's just, so I'll hold the food up and just tap it and I'll sit in silence. I'll just be like tapping it and then I'll eat it. People lose their minds Go nuts. for it. We haven't done a mukbang. I don't know we how. We have to do one. Because it's like KFC, like all this stuff. He's just so good. And if I don't tap, the comments are wild. You really? didn't tap your fries. I'm like, wow, yeah. the fandom is so real. Yeah. Like the lore. I know that's like a term now. The lore of Tammy yeah. is probably so deep where the fans who have been watching since the beginning, like where is that? I love the ones too because I like being a mukbanger in a car where you like look at the people behind you. Have you seen that compilation of people distracting Tammy in the car? And you're like, what the hell? And yes. I'm like, but that's so real. Like it's so yes. real because I feel like that when I'm in the car mukbanging. So, oh my God. Next time I'm here, let's mukbang at KFC. Please. I have my wolf shirt right then. Yes. <laughs> and I'm there's serious. a KFC down the street. I just eat the skin off the KFC. I just love to have the skin. I'm the opposite. I peel the skins off and eat Ooh. the meat so you can have my skins. Oh my God. That's actually like a perfect combination. <laughs> I'm serious. I'm serious. I get a bucket and I just leave the chicken in there and I just eat the skin. I've always done that on my mukbangs. Yeah. I'm the We're opposite. Like a perfect pair. Wow. How did we not do that sooner? I know. <laughs> it is crazy because I do love mukbangs and mukbang collabs used to be such a big thing. Like I did one with Nick Akato. I used to do one with like Zach Trey. And they're just so fun to like eat with somebody. It's, it's just so ridiculous. I love it. Have you talked to Nick Akato lately? Not lately. I haven't been able to get a hold of him. Like we used to be friends, I think. And I'm like, I haven't gotten a hold of him. Like I emailed him. I DM'd him. I'm like, I wonder if he's just really? living his life. I haven't spoken to him. It's been about maybe a year. Um, but him and I don't talk often. But okay. yeah. Just when you're like in town or yeah. something. Yeah. Um, but oh my gosh, I get messages about him regularly. Oh, he's, where's Nick Akato? What's yeah. he like? I don't know. So you don't really like talk to him like Not that? Not on like, a regular okay. basis, yeah. but he's very sweet. And when we do get together for mukbangs, he's great. I no, love he's him. So like, he's actually so nice in person because we had so many ups and downs, me and him. But like, I, I felt, and we became friends. I'm like, God, where, like, I know he's online, but I just don't think he responds. I don't know. He must be just doing his own thing. Maybe he's just, oh, I'm going to reach out and see what he's doing. Okay. Maybe see what he's doing. See if, yeah. I don't he has know. like five channels that he's constantly posting posting on it yeah it's like amazing i was like wow he's really and he's still getting like so many views and like youtube is so hard to get views now yeah. on on youtube is there any like influencer that you like love to clap with like you did theo vaughn is he oklahoma he lives in nashville oh, my, theo is, vaughn lives in is nashville. that where you did the podcast um we actually did it when he was still here in, in la he used to live in la everyone is in nashville what is it about it is it it's well cheaper tax you don't have state taxes mm, state tax is crazy here um it's I love just it's they call it Nash Vegas so it's like it's a small city but it's not small but it still has the uh the LA there's still people filming stuff like it's oh. still like little Hollywood interesting I didn't know that about Nashville mm-hmm. they're like filming shows down there it's and very stuff? it's a very uh entertain I mean it's like country music it's very entertainment capital okay. there that area and it's a lot of comedians live there because it's centered to everything for when you tour 
Oh, that's so, so nice. smart. So you're only traveling like an hour here, an hour there. Yeah. Mm. So I think it's Matt nice. Rife said that in like Texas or something he is. Yeah. yeah. That makes sense. Um, and I love it. A lot of people are moving to Nashville. How long uh, have you been there for? A year. Because you were San Diego, which mm-hmm. is like crazy to go from San Diego to like Nashville, but you're just like, it's so much better. I was in San Diego for 10 years. Loved it. Loved it. And I miss it. Um, I miss the taco shops. Wait, oh. where were you? What area? Escondido. Oh, the food there is good. So that's like north of San Diego. Yeah. Oh, I love Escondido food. I I love, I, mm. I miss it so much, but we love Nashville. Yeah, it's just more, do you feel like just better quality of life there? Yeah, I don't know. It just feels, you know, we wanted land and stuff and you can't mm. get that, you know, out yeah. here. So um, we bought a hundred acres and we live, yeah, we're just good not too you. far outside of town, and I just love it. Do you have animals, like, besides dogs? No, we, no. we're going to get some. They, We want some. We're going to build a chicken coop, and we're going to have, we want to have, like, yeah, Greg so wants to cute. get a cow and stuff, so. Oh, you tip your cow. <laughs> I'm going to tip my cow. <laughs> Guard it so no one tips it. My own personal cow to cow tip. Tipping. That's funny. I wonder if they mind it. I guess it's probably cruel. They probably mind it. I don't know. Yeah. Do they I, wake up? I, I don't, don't know. Yeah. Oh, okay. They just wake up and kind of look around. Oh, okay. And... It's just like probably maybe nudging someone. Don't do it, but, like, <laughs> No, I, I would never do it again. I was so dumb back then. But, yeah. Um, but we love it. Are you a country music fan? Like, I know you do a lot of stuff with country artists, but are you an actual country fan? Yeah. Okay. I like everything, though. On the way here, I was listening to um, 90s rock, like Alice in Chains, Bush. Oh, oh my God. That's so random. Yeah. Your music taste is very eclectic. Literally everywhere. Wow. All over the place. I guess that makes sense, but I feel like Oklahoma and also your character, I guess, just goes with the country music world. Country music or rock. You know, she wears rock t-shirts sometimes. Oh my God. That's my favorite collab that you ever done. You just reminded me of Vampire and Blood. Oh! That to me is the most iconic. They, the fact that you even mentioned them, they them. will lose their minds. They've DM'd me a couple times. They had like a podcast and I'm, I'm, I am truly genuinely, I get anxious because I love them so much. I'm like, I couldn't even imagine because they live in Indiana, which yeah. is like by Illinois. I couldn't even imagine like collabing with them. Like I just love them. So every time I have a show in the area, they'll come and we'll do just like lip singing videos. I love the lip singing videos you do with them. It's so good. And you're just like play so much into like their vibe. Yeah. I love it. They're getting better at lip singing. Like, I know that's like their shtick, but I think it's so great too that they don't care sometimes. I know. You know what's funny is to me, what was funny about their videos was the millennial pause they did. Yes. Remember? <laughs> okay, go. And yeah. Then, yeah. <laughs> that's what was funny. Yeah. And last time we did videos together, he was like, oh, we have it figured out that you actually start before the thing starts oh. so there's not a pause. And I go, we love the no, pause, though. The pause is so iconic. Bring the pause back. Oh, I, I, they need to. Have they, have they edited I, it now? No, they're good. They're, they tighten that up oh, now. no. I, I know. That's what made it so good. And not even funny, like, laughing at them. It was just like, we're so those people, you know, like, the like I'm so that person. There's yes. so many times when you hear, like, one, two, three, go. And it's just like, I know. you know, and I think it's so great when people leave that in. It's almost like comedic genius that when people leave that in because it gives people something to comment on. Exactly. So I wish, hopefully they'll put it back. I love yeah. them. I wonder if they saw their podcast. I, I don't know. I was on their podcast. You did? Yeah, I did their pod. They're so sweet. They're uh, awesome. And the, that's the thing about you is like, you're so comfortable. Like I just get, I would get way too anxious. Like, like to really? meet celebrities or to even do TikToks like that. I would just think, I can't do this. Like, you know oh. what I mean? I don't like to do TikToks with other people. I feel like embarrassed, but yeah. I love that you just go for it. Oh, I go for it. Dude. You're like, I don't I, care. <laughs> even if I am embarrassed or feel uncomfortable, I'll just pretend that I'm not. Yeah. And it just works. Pull through. Does it? Yeah. I'll just pretend that I'm not nervous and I'll just, you know, yeah. I need to get that level mm-hmm. of confidence there. I'm not quite there yet with the TikToks, but. Even if it's not real, just, you guys got to pretend. Because you do so good at it too. Like your confidence that comes through. I'm just like, wow, amazing. And the ones you do with Bunny and Jelly Roll, I was just like. How you're so good at it. I was like amazing. I'm, I'd be they too are ama- They are awesome. Me and Bunny talk about doing a um a little cooking show on Patreon. So <gasps> we're gonna do more stuff together. Yes! Love Bunny. Oh, I love her too. I think she's like so sweet. She's still so sweet. She like congratulated me on my baby. She's like very sweet. I love Aww. her. Um, but the cooking videos. That's what I want to talk about because like I didn't even know this side of you. Like I know you had like. A, like a kind of a parody not parody cooking but again a character cooking but you had like real ones where you were making like steak bok choy and I was like wait you're like so good at cooking dude I cook oh I didn't know this I cook and I eat baby that's my oh that's, that's my two things uh, same well I love now that we cook I'm like I even eat more I'm just like god I love this home cooked food so growing up we literally lived off of like you know government cheese and mm. and powdered milk and whatever honestly whatever the food banks gave us and whatever we could get so now I feel like Food is like, 
I want to cook good food Mm -hmm. and I love feeding people. Mm -hmm. I love eating. Oh, you want to come over for dinner? Bring everybody. I will have a spread. I will be in there all day. Mm. It it makes me so happy to feed people. Mm. Um, And I actually just love cooking. It's relaxing to me. Yeah. It's like we just started cooking a few years ago and it's like therapeutic. It's almost like this therapeutic thing. And yeah, you don't really focus. You can't focus on anything else because you have to like get the ingredients Mm -hmm. and everything. So it's just like this like almost meditation. I love chopping vegetables. Oh, I'm really bad at that. That I can't do. He chops the vegetables. Oh, it's my fa- – dude, I will – I just – anything where I can chop a lot, that's what I love doing. Wow. I need to learn how to chop. I don't know how. I'm very – I'm very uh, really? Kendall. I'm very like – I don't know, but <laughs> I and love pe- that you can chop. People are always like, oh, it would be so much easier if you just got one of those mandolins and did this. Oh, I go, yeah. But I love chopping. You love the action of I it. I love doing Interesting. it. Interesting. Love cooking. Um, people are asking for a cookbook. I'm like, heck, maybe I'll have a cookbook one day. Who knows? Ooh, did you make your own recipes? Like, do you just I do. go from your heart? I would say 90% of the time. Wow. Yeah, I'll just Ooh, whatever. That's a skill. Yeah. Like, how do you know what goes together? Well, sometimes it doesn't turn out good. Yeah. But then you just, next time you just alter it until mm. it did, until, you know, you just trial and error. But I just feel like I'm really good at just knowing what goes with, I don't know. I just feel like I'm naturally good at. Which no is one. crazy because like growing up, like obviously you don't have your parents cooking and you weren't getting this like nice food. So mm-hmm. that I don't is know. interesting. The taste. I, yeah. Don't know. I just wow. love doing it. No, it's so good. Food is like one of those joys in life when people, because I always wanted to go like on Ozempic and when they said one of the side effects was like, you just don't really want food. And I was like, oh. I would be so sad. <laughs> like as much as I would like love to lose it. I'm like, that's like our joy that we have together mm-hmm. is like oh. cooking and eating, you know? Oh, and I get it. it's so good. And, and when you grow up with not having food and like, it's like. This is like a like a luxury, you know. It's like necessity too, but also it's just like a luxury. And absolutely, people are always like, "Oh, what do you do for fun?" I'm like, going out to eat, figuring out what new restaurant I want to go to, mm-hmm. cooking, eat. I mean, it's like that's what it involves. I I want to eat. It's so fun. It's just so nice. It's just so great. Yeah, you know, just to like enjoy. I don't know. This is one of like life's like. Again, a luxury because you didn't have it growing up, but mm-hmm. also just like, you know, simple pleasures. I feel you. I <laughs> it's feel so you. Good. And if you yeah. have people around you that like can enjoy, like appreciate, enjoy the cooking too, because we love to cook for like my parents and stuff like that. It's just like so fun. And they like love it, you know, because people just don't home cook anymore. And, yeah, that's true. You know, but going out to eat too, you have that meme of you opening up the bill. How did that start? Because <laughs> you're at a restaurant. Oh my God. And I see it everywhere. I didn't even realize, I guess I should realize it was you, but I was like, oh my God, what is, and you're just Chelsea, right? You're not a character. No, you're that here. was just me. Yeah. And I never realized that would take off wow so a couple things we were in on tour in florida and we had a night off i'm Mm -hmm. like oh let's go have dinner at this at this place and they brought the bill (laughs) and when i open i've never seen a a bill light up like that i opened it (laughs) and was literally like what no this is the craziest thing i've ever seen wait so it actually lit up it wasn't like an effect no that bit that lit up oh i always see that meme and i always think oh they did like an effect on it that was real (laughs) <laughs> and I was just so mesmerized. Like, this is insane. I go, I got to do a video or something with this. And I was like, I was trying to think. I'm like, what in the world could I do? I have no idea. And I literally just, I'm going to do my reaction of how, you know, so I just did the whole and then put it back together and wasn't even going to post it because I thought it was dumb. Yeah. But I was like, no, people need to see this lit up bill. <laughs> and they, people saw it. It's everywhere. Insane. And you know what's funny? I was just got back from the Bahamas. That video must have went wild down there really because everywhere i went the locals is this you and it would be that video that video every time that is what no i see it everywhere like i see it everywhere all the things i'm like that is crazy that's so weird do you know what your original one has how many views oh i have no clue you don't go and check that no i love that about you you're like i I, (laughs) no i couldn't even tell you the views on my last post so you don't even la- check you never I don't check, check it. anything oh, funny that's the best way to be no and just like know, not care no and you know how people are like oh if it doesn't do well i delete it i've never deleted anything oh yeah no i, I never understood that either i was like just leave it up it's fine because <laughs> if it doesn't do well the people that saw it still liked it yeah. so what and i liked it i liked it enough to post yeah. so I, I don't care about none of that right especially if it's like something like a light-up bill that you never see before like why would you delete that you'd be like no that's like so funny no. i love tiktok that's what i like about tiktok too because it doesn't pay it's like so unserious to me i'm like i just put whatever yeah because it's not like i'm like i need to make money off this you know what i mean right. it's just like makes it more fun and casual the meme is great that one is amazing <laughs> never expected that one to go to blow up oh my gosh insane well, i feel like cooking show definitely food network i feel like food network not that you're country but like has a lot of country people it's like yeah who's the 
not Barefoot Contessa. Who's the other one? She's Trisha? Like friend, frontier Woman. Oh, yeah. Do you yeah, know yeah. her? Yeah. yeah. She's okay. in Oklahoma, Oklahoma, I think. Oklahoma. Yeah. She's just like make, living her best life making mac and cheese. Oh, yeah. Trisha Yearwood. She's great. Have I you know. met her? No. You never met Garth and Trisha? No, I would die. Yeah. I feel like they're like, they're the most like exclusive, I feel. I'm like, how do you even get them? But if anyone could, you could. If you I got know. Uh, let's put that. Uh, that's true. Ooh, let's put I that out there. I wonder if Garth Brooks has a good sense of humor, though. I don't, I, I think. I, I don't know if he does. He seems kind of serious. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. I'll I don't let know you his know. politics either. I always feel like I talk about someone like know that. Like I love Tim Allen. Everyone's like he's conservative republic. I was like I don't know. I just like their. You just like <laughs> their the work they do. Yeah, That's okay. I like. But I know country has like a lot of controversial people. I don't really listen to country you anymore. Can't but like anyone's work or say anything about anybody nowadays without people being upset that you said you liked Tim Allen. It's just I, know. <laughs> I don't even worry about that. I'm just like I. You know. I. You just. There's going to be people that people hate. I just can't. I don't worry about that. That's what's cool about you and the people you collab with, too. You know, like, well, I guess because you know firsthand, you know, you said you have no haters, which is, like, amazing. I saw in an interview and you're like, I really don't get hate. And I'm like, what's the secret? Is it just that you don't see it or you don't – or people just don't come to you? I I don't know. I, feel, I mean, I, I see comments. There are some haters, but I just feel like I don't know. They're, I just don't get a lot. Maybe I don't pay attention to it. I don't know. Yeah, you just see all the love. I yeah, maybe mm-hmm. that's what I focus on. What I try to focus on. There's definitely some comments out there. I just not a ton, not not as much as I see on other people's stuff. Oh, there's like it's just like a cesspool out there of hate on TikTok. You just go to anyone, oh, and people just go to the comments for hate. And it's I'll see the com- yeah I'll see mm-hmm. the comments like this is horrible. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like now if something goes super viral where a lot of outsider are looking at your stuff i'll get a lot of hate but that doesn't even matter yeah that doesn't even count you know okay so you're That's just not, like not acknowledging maybe, it if you see yeah, it yeah yeah which maybe, maybe is the secret right like yeah. law of attraction it's like whatever you see and put out there yeah which makes sense because you do collab with like like you said you kind of collab with everybody some people could think of as controversial right. or you know even being here you know you never right. know what sure. people are gonna I, say <laughs> exactly but i love that about you or just the fact that you're just like yeah everyone has like problematic parts of them or exactly. not even problematic like people's political beliefs like does that define someone i don't know exactly Maybe and i'm does. very and i'm very much like what would dolly do oh, that's the best tagline and dolly loves everyone everyone and, Do- and i love everyone and let's just chill let's everybody calm down let's yeah. just chill <laughs> just, just relax and <laughs> just take a breather and let's just yeah. you know i just think that the whole you know I don't know. The cancel culture, it's like people say stupid shit and, and let's move on and be better and everybody's chill and we're good. Right. And the thing sometimes people like dwell on or attack, I'm like, oh my gosh, is this what we're coming for people for? It's like crazy. There's some people who are like awful people, but. Sure. Yeah, yeah absolutely. But, <laughs> but, uh, yes. But, but for the most all, yeah. part, let's just chill. Chill. You know, what would Dolly do? What would Dolly? Have you been to her Dollywood? No. And I'm <gasps> done. You have? dying to go everyone says it's the best like i just saw holly madison just went she's like that's the best food you'll ever eat and i, I was saw like, all her food too i love oh her my gosh. she saw- comments on your stuff all the time i love her too i'm like and obsessed I, with her and i die every time she does <laughs> she's always like on the maryland one she's like stunning i was like ah she's amazing Shout out wait to have holly. you met her no because she's very big into like social media and like you know social yeah. me- oh my gosh yeah. no but I, it's gonna happen i feel like for oh, sure for she's sure. awesome I, yeah, yeah she's all over tiktok but she went to dollywood and she had those like big cinema buns and i was just like oh that looks so good that's that's on my list to do this year i don't want to go in the summer because it's so hot is it open in the winter doesn't no. it close okay it closes it's closed in the winter time. but i think i need to go like right when it opens in the spring when does it open think in like uh february march something like that i want to go too yeah oh my god i'm gonna because you have to like fly into nashville and then you have to drive right yeah i think it's like, it's the like Appalachian where or yeah it's a couple it's like a few hours from from nashville it's Two, like in hours? the mountains mm-hmm. where is it at hold on oh gosh gatlinburg close close to gatlinburg the gatlinburg area okay so you yeah. have to like go there and stay there that whole area is so beautiful is dolly still living in tennessee yeah she's in nashville nashville do you ever see her? Um, no, but I know that she was driving. Uh, this is how this sounds stalkerish. This sounds stalkerish. <laughs> no, if you're in the area, you just see someone. I know that she was somewhere. Uh, okay, I don't want to give too much away. Okay. But if, if someone was telling me that she was somewhere and that place was like a mile from my house. Oh. <gasps> 
And I go, oh my god, Dolly drove down these roads. She drove down these roads. She... And oh I, all... well, I don't want to say. It. I'll tell you off yeah, camera. Okay, I'll okay, tell okay. you. I, I, okay. know, I know something else about Dolly. I'll tell you off camera. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> big Dolly fan here. Oh, me too. Dolly is my probably ultimate. I'm trying to think if there's anyone bigger that I would love, no, but it's that, just Dolly. There's just not. I love. I'm obsessed with. Oh her. my god. Well, hopefully one of us gets to meet her. Oh god. <laughs> I, would, I would hope. I feel like of all people, because you know all the country legends, I'm like Dolly would have to do. And she seems so sweet. She seems down to do stuff. I know. You make a little Betty Crocker Dolly cake with her. Oh my. <laughs> gosh the little biscuits little cornbread that she has it's well good. her niece just started following me on on <gasps> t- uh instagram so oh, the one from claim to fame i don't know who, I don't was know. she is she like a redhead no black hair oh okay. she works with her daily she's like her one of her stylists or something oh really yeah. there was she had a niece on the show called claim to fame do you ever watch that with kevin jonas i have seen that yeah and her niece was on there and she's like a singer i think her name was star or something like that <gasps> and I, she sings at dollywood I'll go watch that episode. Yeah, I need to find her on Instagram, maybe. Yes, I haven't seen that. <laughs> it's so good. And then no one guessed it was like, she ended up eliminate got eliminated herself because she made the wrong guess, but it was so good. I was like, and then Dolly, I think, did an outro video for her. She was, that's my niece. And she did like this whole thing and people were like blown away. I, can you imagine? No. Dolly is your aunt. I know. And then you like work with her at like Dollywood and I, and you're a singer. No. And she seems so cool and like so close with all her like family. I and I love that because she has like so many like nieces and all this stuff like that. I think it's like so cool. I, I just, know. I love Obsessed. her. She's just like living her life and she's been married for so long. She had this relationship and I love that too because in Hollywood it's like so rare. And- I know. It's funny because she's, she has said, but people have asked her like, oh, what's, you know, what's the secret to a 50 year, you know, she's like, well, I'm never home. <laughs> And it's there like, that's go. true. Touring. That's great. You never have to deal with his ass. Right. You know? Like, she's, she's like, I'm never, like, that's, I love so her. So smart. She's so quick. She's so quick with stuff like that. I think it's, I, she has so many great quotes. I remember as a kid, I always, like, would quote it. She's like, when people say I'm a dumb blonde, she goes, well, I'm not, I'm done. I'm not, I'm blonde. And I was like, yes, absolutely. I try, I try to live my, truly live my life and my career with, like, what, truly, what mm-hmm. would Dolly do? I think about it all the time. Yeah, just be I'm like, open. business-wise, what, what would Dolly do? You know, she's just, she's navigated. Oh, she's amazing. She just doesn't stop. Never mm-hmm. gives up. It's just like she just really trailblazed so much stuff. And that's like such a cool way to live. And she's so unique, which is so cool. Like you said, there's only one of her. But really, Chelsea, you're one of a kind. Like you really are unique. And I mean that so sincerely. You are too. I'm, I'm obsessed with you. You are too. I just try to be like everyone else. I feel like you. <laughs> I try. I'm like, maybe I could try me Dolly, Holly. I try to be anybody but myself. Oh. But you're so uniquely you. And I think it's so beautiful. And I'm actually so like, I can't even like tell you. I'm so happy we connected because I do. I see all the comments asking for you. And then I was when I was researching and watching so much, I was just like, oh, I just feel, and a lot of people probably feel this way to you. They just feel connected. They feel like seen and represented and that's how I feel. And Thank you so much. I'm I so love excited. you, dude. I love you. And I think you're amazing. And I'm honored that you came out to do this. And Dude, I'll come back anytime. Yes. Well, you'll I'll, be close to Oxnard. I'll come up and see you. Come to the show. Yeah. We can do a mukbang. Yes. I'll come on anytime. I'll come on as Tammy. Whatever. Yeah, you, let's do you a Tammy just tell mukbang. Me anytime. Okay. If you have time, we'll do a KFC. It's right down the street Done. when you're in here in town again. Done. Yeah, I'll have my wolf shirt then. Yes. Yay. Done. Well, thank you so much, you guys. This is Chelsea Lynn, aka Tammy. And just watch for her everywhere. This is the year. This is 2024. This is our year. TV show, movies. We're just, we're killing it as Tammy thank and you, Chelsea honey. Lynn. You're amazing. Thank you guys. We'll see you next time. Go check out her eatmytrash.com. Yes. <laughs> and Patreon. Yes. <laughs> thank you.